All right, it's 9-15, 2024. The default volume dropped during the night from 100 down to 89. Gremlins or something. I don't know what's going on. Sabotage. But something's going on. And our volume was low today. Luckily, it was detected in the first 10 minutes. So we didn't miss anything. And I'm just going to go over everything we just went over. We're talking about the Wag the Dog PR stunt. Not as dramatic as the magic trick we got on 713. Today's attempt um, at assassinating Trump was more of a PR stunt. They didn't have to stop the convoy. They didn't have to stop the Trump entourage at the McDonald's to get an extra ketchup packet for this one. No visual evidence. No one's going to be wearing ear bandages. But interestingly, coincidentally, Time Magazine released this on 9-11. Time's new cover, How Kamala Harris Knocked Donald Trump Off Course. And it says, In Trouble. And here you have Donald Trump driving off the green into the sand pit. And in the background, I noticed there's a red flag. So what does that mean? Uh, red flag, red flag laws, mentally ill shooter. I'm not sure the whole meaning of this red flag here, but that's got to be a part of it. But this is another example. This is two for two. Both on 713 and today, these events have been attended by programming, concurrent programming, predictive programming. Anyone who thinks this is real has their head in the box. Can't trust them. Take away their keys. All right, we are... Joined by, yeah, Nicotromus says volume is fine. Joined by Smarty Pants. Inks, it should be 11% louder. Nicotromus says, are you changing your election prediction based on the world wrestling? Yeah, the, the Kamala Harris. We're talking about the wrestler Kamala. Real last name, Harris. And the Umaga. And Umaga beats Kamala. So there, there's a lot of stuff out there you could used to make your assessment over who wins. However, I kind of think that Trump's running out of steam as a character. I don't see them dangling him around for another year. I mean, people barely cared about the last shooting. How much longer can they drag this out? But they can't just get rid of him. They can't just end this story without the big, the big one, the one we've been waiting for, the head wound that hits, not the miss. But based on predictive programming, which is my basis for making any sort of quote predictions, I see Kamala Harris and a civil war, like in DMZ, like she's only governing part of the country. So there's kind of like both of them win, you could say. Uh, thank you very much, Outlaws. Appreciate the support there. Thank you for feeding the crack, Gwyn. We are selling watercolors of the, in fact, if you got the newsletter, I sent the AI version, the one that I based this painting off of. And it's a penguin, a cyborg penguin with an assault rifle on top of a tank with multiple mushroom clouds in the background. And this is just part of our future plan, the infinite plan. Pyro maniacs on the world stage, Pyro being the first skeptic. And we are introducing skepticism, true skepticism, not this partisan stuff. Out of the box, looking at the box as such, recognizing that the model is a model and isn't the territory. Uh, this level of skepticism has never massified. It's always been fringed and censored, atomized. There's never been a network for it. There's never been a platform for this. Uh, so Trutherville, alt media, it just needs to be said, has always been reactions it's always been reactive it's been about current things and the cat thing the cat eating haitian story proves to you that everybody on the right side of the political horseshoe automatically believes what they're told from their side it shouldn't matter if you trust your platform you shouldn't automatically believe them you shouldn't be a believer you should know i don't tell people what to believe like, oh, this is what you should believe to be in the right. Uh, we talk about how we arrive at knowing and 
we arrive at informed disbelief more often than not. I compared the shooting. I called it a wag the dog shooting because I do think it's a PR stunt. Wag the dog is a political term. The act of creating a diversion from a damaging issue. It stems from the generic use of the term to mean a small and seeming unimportant entity like the tail controls a bigger and more important one. And there's a movie about this with Robert De Niro, Wag the Dog. So here's another De Niro connection in a way, but Wag the Dog is what we saw today. They're distracting everybody from the, the possibly the blunder of running full steam ahead with this anti-immigrant Haitians eating dogs and cats story, but it's being pushed by everybody uh, unconscionably. They don't care that it's been debunked. I saw a viral video, supposedly a dog in a Haitian's backyard on a spit. No, it was from some Greek restaurant and it was a sheep and it was years ago. But that's the level of propaganda that is being passed off as truth in Trutherville. And they don't check. They don't vet their information. They're auto believers automatically consuming it. Another thing we mentioned before we got, we got cut off a minute ago. The volume was off. Uh, the shooter Thomas Crooks has a conspicuous resemblance to the Riddler. This was noted by Synchromorpheus and scope these latest headlines. Three days after attempted assassination, Trump shooter remains an elusive enigma. Why would be Trump assassin Thomas Crooks remains an infuriating enigma. So the Riddler, and this was, again, Seeker Morpheus picked this up. The character of the Riddler, who looks just like Thomas Crooks, his name is Edward Nigma, a pun, enigma, a person or thing that's difficult to understand, as in a riddle. So another Batman universe Joker connection to the whole Trump story. But the use of the word enigma in multiple headlines seems to be messaging. And when we're looking at the news, you should be looking at it as such. It's all putting together messaging for future fake events. Smarty Pants says they want Trump so they can start up the racist, radical right winger stuff again. Well, right now in Ohio, the KKK is on the march and the Proud Boys over these rumors. And you may be right about this. You may be right. Nicotrauma says the political right would never fight in a civil war. That's how we know it'll be fake if it kicks off. It's a bunch of LARPers. Oh, you don't think that Tim Pool's going to get off his skateboard, get off his rollerblades and pick up an AR-15 and go march into the cities? What about Alex Jones? Now, Alex Jones, uh, he, he'd be too rattled to go out and fight. He talks tough. But we all saw six weeks into the pandemic, Alex Jones was on the verge of tears crying about how he's going to have to eat his neighbors to feed his daughters. Okay, again, the Joker movie comes out on 10-4. We'll talk about that. The main connection here is you could look at October the 4th, 8, Oct 8, as another 8-4 date. And we've had all these connections to 8-4 and the Trump head wound thing, as JL has often referred to. We've seen 4 8, eight four. Like, okay, this is at a golf course. And remember, Iran had the video, the animation of the golf course assassination of Trump. Time Life, Time Magazine, the golf course. So it wasn't Iran. It was some guy named Ryan, which is kind of an anagram. Iran, Iran I mean, Iran and Ryan in a way. But there's um, a couple of other points here I have to bring up. Okay, this is the other one. So when this happened, I said, and this is after JL was talking about possibly Trump winning and then the left burning down the system. And then Taylor Swift endorses Kamala Harris. So I suggested that maybe the Swifties would burn everything down. So instead of BLM, it's going to be the Swifties. So when this shooting happened, I just kind of rhetorically, I, I said, the shooter is a Swifty, or probably a Swifty. And it turns out the shooter is a Swifty and retweeted an I love Swift. I love Taylor Swift. And then today, look what Donald Trump tweeted. I hate, in all caps, I hate Taylor Swift. Like, what is that? 
Uh, breaking son of alleged would-be Trump assassin tells the Daily Mail that his father hates Trump like every reasonable person does. Adding, he's my dad and all he's had is a couple of traffic tickets as far as I know. I know my dad and love my dad, but that's nothing like him. He was at the beach, but I thought that meant the Outer Banks in Hawaii. I didn't ask for more information. We've grown apart. He's not a violent person. Uh, now, we're talking about the guy who said he wanted to go kill Putin. He's a hard worker, great dad, great dude, nice guy. I hate this game every four years. This is the son of the would-be assassin. If my father wants to be a martyr to how broken and disassociated the process has become from the real problems and practical solutions, then that's his choice. Is his son named ChatGPT? Does anybody find any of this believable? The son of the would-be assassin said all that? Give me a break. Nicotrama says, yeah, you're right. I, I don't disagree with you either. I think they want the impression that the right would rise up and fight, but they're docile. January 6th was a pathetic simulation because they couldn't get the real thing to happen. You, you couldn't. You can, you can get peaceful protests on the left, but for some reason the right's unmotivated. Maybe just sitting around for all these years high on hopium, consuming popcorn, breadcrumbs, drinking the Kool-Aid. They're just not up for it. They've been demoralized. All right, moving on. Leave the world behind. I have to bring this up because the 17th in two days, it's the full moon. And leave the world behind has an ominous reference. The end screen after the movie ends at the end of the movie, emergency alert system. We're all getting nuked. Go into your bunkers. Behold the end war live anagram for leave the world behind last scene has this 9 17 24 so 9 17 is referenced in leave the world behind similarly i was just targeted with an ad for the edge of tomorrow with tom cruise and in edge of tomorrow it has a reference to 9 17 which i'll be getting to here shortly so just mark your calendar. It looks like 917. Here it is. So in Leave the World Behind, we have the explicit reference. And then this. Netflix released the 2014 film Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. It's a doomsday film. One scene, the general secretary's name is Iris, and her birthday is September 17th. So Iris, September 17th. What does that mean? Not quite sure, but Edge of Tomorrow, End of the World, I'll have to watch it. Whenever I see Iris, I think Siri, Siri backwards, and the all-seeing eye on your phone. Oh yes, let's do that too. I have some screenshots for that. So the first season, episode 12 of The Sopranos, has Tony Soprano survive an assassination attempt, and it clips his ear. So there's a couple of things to bring up about this. The 84th episode has the second coming reference. JL talked about it. So we've already noted some Sopranos connections to Trump. Trump, like Tony Soprano, is a bad Don, like a bad mafia Don. And a bad Don, or, or Abaddon, is Apollyon, the destroyer in the abyss, a reference to Revelation 9-11, to the nuke, to Trump. It's all tied in there. But here is another Mafia Don figure with a bandage on his ear. Not a coincidence. Okay, moving on. I'm putting this up on the screen. That's Tony Soprano, and this is time in trouble. Donald Trump being uh, basically chased off a golf course that is just blatant anybody who thinks this is a real assassination attempt has their head in the box and again this is 9 11 so 9 11 time magazine posts this cover how kamala harris knocked trump off course so this is planned 
everything we're seeing is planned. Now, this is interesting because the commenter here said about the right wing going crazy. Um, they could run a bunch of psyops easily. Anyone who murders Kamala Harris, this is from Libertarian Party NH. They said anyone who, I don't even feel comfortable saying this stuff. I don't need Secret Service knocking on my door. Anyone who blanks Kamala Harris would be an American hero. This is by Libertarian Party NH. And the, the, later they said, we deleted the tweet because we don't want to break the terms of the website. It's a shame that even on a free speech website, the libertarians cannot speak freely. Libertarians are truly the most oppressed minority. What a clueless tweet. Like, if you're a libertarian, you should understand what free speech is and what it isn't. So this is crazy speak. But the idea that they would post this on Twitter like this in today's political climate is suggestive that they're trying to set a tone so that when something, some psyop goes down, it seems like it was inevitable. They're setting the stage for sure. The KKK has flyers out in Ohio alongside the Proud Boys. So here's an example. Foreigners and Haitians out. There's no place in America for this. Mass deportations. A quarter of Springfield is already in poverty. Trinity White Knights of the Klan. Fascinating. Now to continue along those lines, because we're looking at Springfield as this ground zero they're creating. Just today, Jack Posebeck posted this image, which is already debunked. And he says, and this is the guy who started Pizzagate. Comet Pizza, Jack Posebeck, Pizzagate, openly endorses the idea that we need a satanic panic. He's th there to provoke stuff. You can trace a lot of the QAnon movement to him, and he's connected to, well, everybody in the uh, far right. Steve Bannon, of course, and him are constantly putting out the same messaging, and it's, it's pretty much the case that Jack Posebeck is an agent provocateur but he says, quote, shocking video appears to show African migrants grilling cats in Ohio town in 2023. Well, a vegetarian debunked it. Or they were just pointing out how that's chicken, that these are chicken talents, not cat claws. Now, the whole point of this is to incite something. Here's another one. He shared this one as well. And as I predicted, he wouldn't correct his own claims. Uncovered, man catches his Bosnian neighbors cooking a dog. And he says his cat's missing. Turns out that it's not a dog. It's a lamb, and it's at a Greek restaurant or something. Just like the Haitian carrying the goose in Springfield wasn't in Springfield, and he's not even Haitian. The only thing we know for sure is that it was a goose. We don't even know if it was illegally obtained. So MAGA shares video of chickens on a grill in Dayton, Ohio, and tries to pass them off as cats in Springfield. They're just lying at this point. That's all they're doing. They just make the 100% engaging in fabrications. And the paranoia is getting off the charts. Uh, here's Tucker Carlson who said, it's not that the pets are being eaten. It's that the pets are being sacrificed. We've imported... 5% of the population of a country where the dominant population practice, where dominant religion is witchcraft. So here is Tucker Carlson on tour describing how we're being invaded by witches. It's not that the pets are being eaten, it's that they're being sacrificed, actually. That's the truth. That's the truth. We've imported a lot of people, over 5% of the population, from a country in which witchcraft is the dominant religion. And that's not, a, that's not a guess. I've been to that country. I know a lot of great people from that country, by the way. I'm not attacking everyone in the country at all. But the fact is that the people in question come from a country in which witchcraft is the dominant religion. All right, so we have witches, demonic aliens, working with the government. And uh, what, what, what else do we have to be afraid of right now? There's so many things to be scared of. But I didn't have witches. I was like, aliens, okay, demonic aliens, but now I've got to worry about witches. 
witches that sacrifice pets. And I consider myself fairly well read on the subject of witchcraft and various magical philosophies. I've made it a point to study the stuff really since the last equinox. I've really tripled down on it because I went to some event and I bought a bunch of books. And I have yet to find any example of animal sacrifice being endorsed in any practice or a theory that would explain why you would be abusing animals. And even in the context of animal sacrifice as it is practiced, I don't think it's fundamentally any different than regular butchery, just dressed up with some ceremonial recognition of one's role in the transference of the life force from one form to the other. But it's not the same as, quote, animal abuse or torture. I don't know if a chicken would rather be put through a, a, a voodoo ritual than sacrifice for KFC. I don't know. But it's kind of a misrepresentation to think that this is some kind of like satanic panic, uh, evil cult stealing animals and murdering them for the devil. But Tucker Carlson's listeners will lap all this up. I'm surprised people still follow him after the texts that were released following January 6th, where he referred to Magas as, co as cousin efforts. You can look it up. So this is what we were talking about the other night. Yumaga versus Kamala, like Maga, Kamala, real last name Harris. And Maga beats Kamala if we go by the 2006 wrestling match. And we've been talking about Hulk Hogan and his little reference to Donald Trump's blading of his ear. Jennifer Reeves says, living near Salem, I have not heard of any animals getting hurt or anything. Well, all we have, all we have are rumors. Diana Southheart says, halal is tortured animals. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Is it seems like singling out one form of animal sacrifice over another seems a little hypocritical. Now, listen to this. This is a, a key point. We're talking about disease X. And as we've been talking about for a long time here, how Twitter becomes X and it's going to be the vector for disease X, the placeholder name for the virus that's going to wreck the world according to the WHO. And my contention is that disease X is the mind virus, the rage virus, the hate virus. And that it's going to afflict the right wing. So we talk about monkeypox coming out. WHO says monkeypox is a global emergency as of 814. Bad monkey comes out 814. Giant monkey god statue in Houston, 90 feet tall. Video game, black myth, you play the monkey god. 10 million people playing it concurrently. So concurrent messaging, concerted messaging, all kinds of stuff about the monkey stuff that all ties back to the rage virus. 28 days later, rage virus. The author of that directs Civil War, Rage Virus, Afflicting the Right. Civil War is the movie where the black female soldier kills the Trump guy. So there's a messaging there as well. Civil War, Trump's in the White House, they take him out. So that's another way of looking at the predictive programming. Maybe Trump does go in, but it puts us into a state of war. But here's what I'm talking about with the disease X. We're talking about the person who started the rumor about Haitians. So the person's name is Newton. And Newton told NewsGuard, listen to this, Facebook misstated her story that the owner of the missing cat was an acquaintance of a friend rather than her daughter's friend. She had no idea her post would become part of a rumor mill that would spiral into the national consciousness. She has since deleted her post. She never imagined her Facebook post would set off a national news cycle. I didn't think it would get past Springfield, she said. So now you're seeing the fallout, like an atom bomb. She, she posts a meme. It goes viral. Now you have bomb threats shutting down Springfield, evacuating schools, Klansmen marching, hate groups marching, Patriot Front, Proud Boys, putting out flyers, being hostile, to immigrants, and this is all the result of what? A meme. A meme that wasn't censored. It became a viral 
me, which essentially is what I've been describing. They're going to say to the public, we have to censor the internet because some memes will spread to certain demographics and cause outbreaks of violence. So this is obviously fake. This is an agenda. They want you to be afraid of mind viruses the way you're afraid of actual viruses. So I think the monkeypox pandemic or whatever it's going to be is really just um, more or less a metaphor. It's just an, an, it's just like they use 2020 to condition us to accept the existence of not just the existence of mind viruses, but the need to lock down the comments. But this time, it's not about locking down the comments where we walk around, but it's the comments of cyberspace. Nick Atrama says, in my mind, it's not Kamala versus Trump in 2024. It's Osman versus Garrow based on their presidential predictions. Well, uh, Garrow and I aren't doing the same thing. Uh, he does believe that Seattle's really going to blow up, and he has a religious paradigm. This is all from God and a higher power. I don't know. I don't claim to speak for a higher power. Uh, I have no biblical framework, and whatever they're going to do, in my view, they're going to fake it. It's not going to suddenly become real. So we actually have a fundamental disagreement. There's not even a comparison. Uh, I don't believe in the biblical eschatology. I don't believe in doomsdays. I don't have enough information. I'm too much of a skeptic. And also more importantly, I'm trying to keep mysticism out of this. I think we need more information, less confusion. And I'm aiming for understanding the architecture of mass deception by studying all the various outlets, the various boxes. And from this perspective, it's not about, to me, it's not about the end of the world or salvation or um, spirituality. And I think that's a common thing. A lot of people in Trutherville end up feeling like they're fighting a spiritual battle. And that's by design. They want you to feel like you're on the good side fighting the bad side. And I'm like, I feel like if you line up behind a religious paradigm, you might be getting played. And I'm going to risk hell, I guess, but that's fine. I'm really not all that bothered by it. It just seems like a design flaw, and not my fault. But again, so I don't have the same frame of reference here. But if you go off of the movie Civil War, Trump's in the White House and he's taken out. If you go by fallout, there's blood on the side of his head and the Kamala Harris character, Betty Pearson, steals control or takes control. If you go by DMZ, you have a civil war and you have the Kamala Harris character in control of one part of Manhattan, part of the country. I'm not calling it for Kamala. I mean, if you think about it, and, and he's not a meta scripter. Uh, the thing is, like, okay, another thing too. I'm not anti, I'm not a Jew phobe. I don't care about the red herring. I don't believe that, quote, Jews control the world. And if somebody believes that, it's the intellectual equivalent of believing that whitey controls the world. It's like, what is it? Cr critical race theory or critical Jew theory? And I reject both. And I get a lot of flack. Like, I actually made a meme. I found this meme on Twitter. So I combined them. So here's this individual on the left. Saying, a, a black saying to the white, you dominated my race, made us subservient to the society you now control. He's got the cry face. Now here's a white guy with the crying face looking at a Jew. You dominated my race, made us subservient to the society you now control. So I'm just pointing out that these are identical frameworks. You can just choose who you want to believe controls the world, and you can find evidence to support it. There is as much evidence to support the idea that the whitey is the oppressor, that systemic racism is the oppression, as there is for the far right fringe to blame and, and hunt or, or blame it all on one ethnic group. And the point of it is, these are flawed models. They're flawed. You can't say Israel benefited from 9-11. 9-11 was a movie. And if you proceed as though these events are real, you could be misled into accepting these ridiculous scapegoat stories. All the anti-white stuff you hear from the left is the mirror of the anti-Israel, anti-Jew stuff you hear on the right. And so like, I, 
I get flack from people because I don't buy into their model. Like I'm not in your box. This only makes sense if you subtract from your awareness the existence of psychological warfare operations and the and the wholesale fakery, the simulation of major transformative historic events. So no, I don't consider my perspective on this to be coming from, I don't consider Garrow to be a metascriptor in the same sense. But he has his perspective and he's very clear about it. And if somebody wants to hear it, they can listen to him. I don't share the perspective. Does that make a difference? No. Not to me. And one other point, these are loser worldviews. If, you, if you're blaming everything on the world, you're blaming your own personal failures, if you think you're going extinct because this other group, that's a loser framework. And I don't believe any of that stuff. I just don't. And, and you might believe it, but you don't know it to be true. You cannot tell me who runs this place. And the explanation that it's a higher power, we've ruled that out. But it's not a who done it. It's a what is it. And I'm a media deconstructionist. I'm not a truther. And I'm not a priest. I'm not a doomsday cult leader. And I'm not trying to save anybody's souls. Um, I don't care. Like Seattle, Seattle's going to get fake nuked. I can't wait. I'm not telling anybody, hey, get out of Seattle. Because I, I don't think they're going to actually kill anybody because they never do. On the other hand, JL says it's going to be real. Well, maybe it is. However, if it is real and I'm wrong, I'm going to feel very bad. I'm going to feel really bad because there are a few people I know out there I could have evacuated. But as of right now, my conscience is clean. I can't wait for Seattle to get Oppenheimered. And if you don't like how that sounds, that's on you. You know, because your beliefs are different than mine. What do I mean by what is it? Okay, who done it is like who's in control? The reptiles, skull and bones, whitey, Jews, and that, that's a who done it mystery. And I'm not looking at this as a who done it. I'm looking at it as a what is it? And what is it? Well, what we're shown on TV, through the media, through the entertainment, through media writ large, through the mass mediation, is a version of things as they're said to be. Truth Hurt says, is it a coincidence there are lots of J's in powerful positions? Uh, no, that's, that's pretty much a bias. I would say it, it has explanations, and it's probably a misrepresentation. You know how many Indians are CEOs of various tech companies? You could make various arguments, but I see people connect like, yay, that's yay level thinking. The guy's addicted to laughing gas. He walks around like wrapped up in garbage bags and has his naked wife on a leash. Like, I don't operate at that level where he's like, look at all these uh, Jewish last names. They own Disney and they own this company. They control us. I'm like, nobody made you decide to run your family into the ground and try to open a porn company. That's what Ye's up to after his conversion to Christianity. So no, I don't believe it. And again, if you believe it, you're fed a propaganda line because you can find just as much info to pin everything on Whitey if you're on the left. But I don't even care about identity politics, race politics. I don't get into it. And I would also point out that it's all narrative. Like, for example, they want you to think, like right wing, get out of the cities, go rural, go quarantine. What do you think they're quarantining for? Why do you think, just as an example, because many of you know, Owen Benjamin, he built this thing called Bertaria, where they move out to Idaho, kind of close to Ruby Ridge, interestingly. And the idea is, let's create our own thing. He gets kicked out of Hollywood because he rejected their values. That's his narrative. He gets kicked out of mainstream. So he forms his own community and he has these annual comedy festivals. He just had a second one. But the whole premise is to get away from what? To get away from the left, to quarantine, to get away from leftist values and to get away from Jew controlled media. So you have a quarantine based on race and religion basically not even religion in a way i mean it's kind of weird how they kind of conflate what they do with christianity but for the most part uh it's it's a psyop it's a psyop to make you think that they've identified the ultimate bad guy and you just need to run as far as you can from it but then if you look at the other side of the spectrum and anything that's bifurcated like this is fake and it's a mind game the left 
views the rural areas as scary and they aim for and, and their place is the cities there's just this perfect bifurcation down the middle and i'm just saying if you fall for critical race theory or critical jew theory you've been sold a model and i don't think these models are valid and one more point i i rarely talk about this stuff uh, because the people who are obsessed with this stuff will hate you if you don't have their opinions and I think it's worth it to bring it up once in a while because if you buy into this and you're offended by what I say or you're mad because I'm not defending uh, your race or something, you're free to leave or move on or go to your clan. You know, go make some white babies. Like, go reproduce. Go prevent yourself from being replaced or something. Like, get off the internet. That's Or go to church. You know, go to church or whatever. Go build your communities. Go run out to the woods and go off the grid, but I don't believe you can go off the grid until you're off the grid mentally. So for example, if you still believe the news as even if you're an alternative person, you believe alternative news, you can run as far as you want away from civilization. You're still on the grid if they're in your mind. I'm off the grid. I can walk into, the, into a big city. I can go on a subway. I can go into crowded areas. I'm off the grid. I can sit, I can have my lunch sitting beneath the 5G tower and I'm still off the grid because it's mental. It's a mind war. Yes, Vanden Vanden. We went over the 911 Trump magazine cover where he's falling off the golf course into the sand pit. Time in trouble. Okay, catching up. All right. So... Anybody who tells you they know who runs the world is likely trying to distract you from something and trying to outrage you against a group. Meanwhile, everything you're blaming them for was fake. So if you're mad about a group for doing something, it's like you're being misdirected. Think about all the people who think that systemic racism killed George Floyd. George Floyd's not dead. You got played. And they're playing with your emotions. You burned that dumpster for nothing. You committed property crimes. You looted over a PSYOP. Like, I'm not triggerable by the media. And if you think that you're being genocided, you're probably triggered. Okay, moving on. Speaking of triggered, one final comment on this. We did have a caller the other night who was very triggered about immigrants and about America and love it or leave it. And, and it's like, that's... That's very triggered, but it's also an indication that you haven't let go. Like, I don't know if I believe in, um, if I believe in everything that I was taught growing up as much as I used to, like, I've dispensed with a lot, a lot of stuff you take for granted, but it's like, what are you exactly fighting for? Like, are you the resistance if you're tweeting furiously about foreigners eating cats or witches coming from Haiti or demonic aliens working for the government? Okay, let's continue. We, we, got, we have the Season 1, Episode 12, Sopranos, Ear Wound. We have Donald Trump, Wag the Dog, another shooting. We talked about Thomas Crooks called an Enigma. And Enigma is the name of the Riddler, and he looks like young Riddler. Not a coincidence. Uh, we're talking about Ohio as being the center of a Disease X outbreak. A rage virus that has the clan out wanting to eject and mass deport Haitians. And it's spread because of a Facebook post. So you can see the story they've put out there. Now, um, kind of off topic, but the other night, and I think this is actually on topic because we're talking about the Joker on 10-4. And 10-4 or October 4th is another 8-4 like date. So I watched the new Joker movie, and I'm looking at the art, the posters, the color, and I noticed something very intriguing about him. Green hair. So now, let's look at the Joker. The Joker has green hair. So green hair, Joker. Green hair, Beetlejuice, who's kind of a 
Joker archetype. And I was thinking about these Kachina dolls, this Hopi, it's called the Joker. You can buy these on reservations. It's a Kachina doll. These are uh, basically religious artifacts. I mean, these aren't children's toys. These are uh, deeply symbolic idols, or I guess you'd, I guess you'd call these, here we go. These, these are essentially like idols representing various spirits or gods. And this is their Joker. And look how he's dressed. The black and white stripes. So what are we seeing here? The green hair, the black and white stripes, Beetlejuice. I'm not quite sure, but Joker 2 comes out on 10-4. And again, 10-4 uh, is also, or October 4th, significant date is the date that Sputnik made it into orbit. So there's some kind of a, that's the date the space age started. Major transformational date. But I think you could also connect it to the fact that Joker 2 was being filmed outside of the courthouse. Let me go ahead and pull that article up. So it was being filmed during Trump's trial on 4-4-2023. Exterior filming occurred in New York City. Gaga film scenes with a crowd of extras. Joker's arrest. Fascinating. A crowd of extras demanding Joker's arrest outside New York County Courthouse, which led some onlookers to mistake it for Trump's arrest following his first indictment. So here's the merging of the real world and the movie world. They're converging, the screens. The Joker movie merged with reality, where people see the crowd demanding the arrest of Joker. Meanwhile, Trump is inside. And this is on 4-4, which is the 55th anniversary of MLK's assassination. It's Holy Week, so it's all about the resurrection of Christ. That's why Second Coming ties into this. That's why Joker 2 is significant. That's why it's also significant that on 4-4, Heath Ledger dies at 44. 4-4 uh, is two crosses, double cross, resurrection symbolism. But now Heath is replaced by Joaquin Phoenix. So you have the second Joker. It's kind of a, another way of reiterating the resurrection theme. But again, they mistook the crowd chanting for the arrest of Joker for going after Trump. So there's no way Joker 2 coming out on 10-4 goes by without some kind of a bang. Take cover as the other movie that comes out on that day is called, Take Cover. Now, before I take calls, I have one more thing I want to get into. I don't want to spend too much time on the NASA stuff, but we have a pretty funny image here of an astronaut who's got a vein popping on his forehead because he's upside down. And I got into a debate with a number of people on Twitter about special effects and movie effects. Okay, this is a strange one. I came across this today. DC's Harley Quinn, a Max original. So here you have Harley Quinn on a rocket in space. Now the rocket is obviously similar to Dr. Evil's rocket. It's phallic symbolism, very blatant. But it's Harley Quinn. So this makes, this makes me think of a few things. It's pretty clear, as I thought before, that, that Harley Quinn... The H-A-R had some symbolic connection to Harlot, the Great Harlot, the Whore of Babylon stuff. And here's how I'm arriving at this, because she's with the Suicide Squad. Jack Parsons, who pretty much invented slow-burning rocket fuel and is responsible for all this rocket stuff, godfather of, of modern rocket science, uh, he was part of a group called the Suicide Squad. And that's because what they were working with was so dangerous. Later... He's there for the performance of The Babylon Working. Now, The Babylon Working, again, has to do with this woman in red, the, the witch in red. And last year, we were talking about the Barbie movie with Margot Robbie and how she represents the horror of Babylon. Well, interestingly, Margot Robbie was in Suicide Squad. So Suicide Squad connects to Jack Parsons' Suicide Squad and then here's where it gets even clearer. The movie, uh, sorry, the book about Jack Parsons is called Sex and Rockets. So this connection here between 
uh, rocket science and sex magic is pretty clear. But the idea that they would have this supervillain riding on a rocket this shape in space, it just reiterates what we've been saying. This is high-level occult programming um, in, in the mainstream. Elephant Tusk says, Tim, I'm a proponent of CPT, critical penguin theory. Yeah, penguins rule the world. Vanden Vanden says, in radio communication, 10-4 is often used to confirm receipt of a message. That's, that's correct. So 10-4, Joker 2. 10-4, Sputnik. And, and here's one more connection to this. It was 10-4, 1957. In 2020, uh, Russia came out with the... And Sputnik was the reason why they had to force the moon landing to happen. It was to one-up them. But in 2020, Russia released the first COVID vax, and it was called Sputnik 5. And Putin bragged about how they won the space race, and they won the inner space race, the vax race. Sputnik 5, first registered vax. And that was on 8-11-2020. So there's something going on here. The connection being Russia, Sputnik, 10-4, and now Joker 10-4. And it's worth noting, too, how much of the right wing has been um, saturated with accusations of colluding with Russia, especially recently, Tim Pool and others. Okay, phones are open, 505-510-4226. If you have any more to say about 917, we mentioned leave the world behind at the very end has a reference to 917 and so does edge of tomorrow edge of tomorrow tom cruise has just been hyped on netflix not a coincidence and that is a full moon so we'll be watching that again we're talking about the attempted assassination on trump wag the dog and i don't think anybody predicted today's date this would happen Certainly not Donnie Darkened. Uh, those, now, as far as the Russian thing, because people are just so dismissive. I mean, obviously we know these are all puppets on the world stage, but the Russian company is called Tenet. Right-wing influencers say they were duped in an alleged Russian influence operation. They'll keep their millions for now. So a number of right-wingers were getting money from a company called Tenet. Tenet is where, again, Tenet is the name of the company. is paying them all 100K a week to spew anti-Ukraine propaganda. But interestingly, again, two days after U.S. authorities accused two employees of Russian state media network of coordinating online. Yeah, this is fascinating. But anyway, uh, Tenet ties right into Christopher Nolan, the movie Tenet. And it opens up with the shooting scene inside of a, here we go, inside of an opera house, which we saw happen in real life at the Crocus Theater. So the name Tenet has some interesting connections to a Christopher Nolan film. So there's, there's something about this. I don't know yet, but Christopher Nolan, his brother Jonathan Nolan, you got Batman, you got Oppenheimer, you got Fallout. So there's no way this is insignificant. And the connection here could be if you look into the Turner Diaries and the general narrative threads here, it would seem that the next 9-11, the nuking of Seattle, is going to come at the hands of domestic violent extremists working with Russia. So we have it all here. The stage has been set. Thank you, Elephant Tusks. Yes, HBO has a show called Chimp Crazy. I have many examples of this mind virus narrative and it all ties in disease x as the vector for the thing that justifies the shutting down of the internet think about it because of a meme posted on facebook we've had an outbreak of not even violence yet but we've had an outbreak of hate out there in ohio 
It didn't take very long either for this thing to show up. And this is exactly in line with what we've been talking about. That's the reason they shut down X in Brazil. So yes, Chimp Crazy, an American documentary series about someone going crazy over chimps. But the theme here, a bad monkey. Okay, now bad monkey came out on 311. So 311 is a virus state. Another connection between the mind virus, bad monkey, and again, bad monkey also involves Jordan Peele who gave us Nope. And Nope, and this is the key, Nope was inspired by the spectacle surrounding the George Floyd death, according to Jordan Peele. So Jordan Peele kind of gave away the game there because if Nope was inspired by George Floyd, then what is he talking about? The rage virus. That that piece of art, that meme, triggered all that rage. Uh, so Jordan Peele's new horror firm, Nope, is a social commentary the film was given extra urgency after the death of George Floyd. Did you know that Jordan Peele's Nope was inspired by the murder of George Floyd? It's a commentary. So if you think about it, you, co you combine these things. Chimp Crazy, uh, Monkey Man, Bad Monkey, 28 Days Later with the Rage Virus, and then even Civil War because it's the author of 28 Days Later. And 28 Years Later is being produced right now. So what we're looking at here is the rage virus. So right now, the rage virus is Haitians cooking cats, Haitians eating dogs, aliens, illegal aliens, or unwanted immigrants killing pets. That imagery is meant to incite violence on the right. Similarly, Derek Chauvin kneeling on George Floyd as a mind virus kicked off 2020. It wouldn't have happened without that footage or think about the beating of Rodney King, the beating of Rodney King set off the LA riots. Those riots wouldn't have happened without that footage. So here we're seeing the argument being made, being accepted tacitly by most passively without any deep consideration. So they're going to say, if one person can post a meme on Facebook and cause all this, then maybe there needs to be some guardrails put in place to prevent this in the future. Isabel Ann says, Tuesday is full moon eclipse. There are connecting alignments with Jupiter today and 713. Interesting. Okay, moving on. I think we've covered the notes I want to get to. The NASA stuff, we can kind of leave alone for a moment here. I don't see the point in arguing with people who believe all the news is real. Uh, here we go. Proud Boys March in Springfield in response to surge of Haitian migrants. Proud Boys marching through Springfield. And Sinker Morpheus had made some interesting connections between Simpsons, Springfield, and the Simpsons cat named Snowball. And how it seems like we're talking about the mind virus spreading or snowballing something growing out of control. And there are a number of headlines about Springfield and how... I just, look, I just searched Springfield Snowball Cat. Snowball, the Simpsons' fifth cat who looks exactly like Snowball. So they have a lot of cats named Snowball. They're up to Snowball 5. What happened to Snowball the cat? First version was run over by a Chrysler. The second was run over by a Mercedes-Benz. Third one drowned trying to catch a goldfish. So here we have Springfield, Ohio, a cat named Snowball. But I scroll down and look at these headlines. No migrants, this is Rolling Stones. No, migrants are not eating people's cats in Ohio. The, the, the theme here is simply that it's getting out of control. And here's the living example. So this is what I more or less predicted. I said that they would demonstrate how memes on X will cause outbreaks of violence and hate. And if you were following this story, People were using Grok to create memes of cats in MAGA hats holding AR-15s. Trump's fantasy that migrants are eating cats proves... Here it is. This is great. When political memes take on a life of their own. 
So you can find many examples right now of cat memes. Here's a Trump with an AR-15 on the back of a giant cat protecting the cats. So these are all memes that don't reflect reality, but that no longer matters. And the end result of these memes is this. Let me go play this clip. See, now you have the angry carriers of this rage bait, this mind virus, marching down the street. It says, quote, in response to a recent surge of immigrants, locals claim this influx has compromised public safety and taken jobs. Kind of like the Venezuelan gangs took jobs from the Crips and the Bloods. They don't want their jobs taken. So the Hell's Angels are going to stop the Venezuelan gang members. I heard that Hell's Angels are on their way to Springfield to protect the cats. That's all you got to do. You just say that and people will automatically believe it. Isabel Ann says the world's oldest cat just died at 33. Oh, let's take a look. Crisis cat. Much loved Moggy, the oldest cat in the world, died at 33. Rosie, a fluffy tortoise shell. All right. This is 13 hours ago. World's oldest cat dies at 33, leaving homeowner heartbroken. And she's not in Springfield. And the idea that cat, that being cruel to cats or eating cats is a Haitian thing, I don't know. I, I remember this really terrible movie called Gummo that I saw when I was a kid and I don't I can't believe I actually watched this. But it's here's the rundown of it. And ironically it takes place, it's just coincidental. It takes place in Ohio. A teen friends, Tumblr and Solomon, navigate the ruins of a tiny tornado ravaged town in Ohio. When not gunning down stray cats for a few bucks they pass their time getting stoned on household inhalants. They're selling the cats, I believe, to a Chinese restaurant. So it's, it's pretty terrible. I would not recommend it. Very disturbing experimental film. Just pointing it out here that, you know, if there was anything going on, PETA would be on it. But it's already been debunked. The cats that you've been shown are chickens. The, sh the dogs are sheep. A Newful Lantigua says the TV series Elf the Alien Eats Cats. Yeah, we talked about that the other day, the, the cat-eating alien elf. And then you had that woman, her name was Alexis Farrell, who was apparently involved in some real incident with cats, but her name has A-L-L, -L, like an extra L, but her last name Farrell, like wild, but kind of an elf name. Tim and Vic says, a friend of mine was in Gummo. Interesting. Shooter got arrested. He looks like Beavis. I saw the shooter and his son. The shooter's son said that his dad did the sensible thing. I'll post that again. The son of the shooter said, he's my dad. He hates Trump like every reasonable person does. Unbelievable. It sounds like he and his dad are similarly brainwashed. Okay, phones are open 505 510 4226. We're talking about the uh, cat and dog eating psyop. And I used the phrase brute force mind hacking earlier today. Uh, brute force hacking is where, where you, you hack through guessing passwords, trial and error. It's, it's the same philosophy as throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. And I feel like right now we're undergoing brute force mind hacking. So it's like, I don't believe in this shooting. Then why would you believe in this other one? The first one didn't work. This one did work. Nobody's disputing this one. And maybe because there's not a lot to deconstruct. It's like a PR stunt it's a press release they didn't stop at mcdonald's for a ketchup packet for trump to smear it on his face 
So this is like an example of the first one didn't work. Let's try the next one and the next one. And this one has the Time Life magazine, which tells you that it's predicted. It has the whole predictive programming attached to it. All right, let's see, going through your comments. Yeah, if you... Any other information, definitely appreciate it. Uh, Infinite Plane Radio. Samuel Smith is calling you from the Socorro County Jail. Press 1 to accept the call. Press 3 to... Call connected. This call is being recorded and has a maximum call length of 30 minutes. Hey. Hello. Hey, how you doing, caller? Hello, this is Samuel. Oh, yeah, I remember your, your call from last time. A lot has happened since then. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed you mentioned the Kachina dolls, and um, so uh, I was listening to some things you were saying tonight. Um, thank you for the, uh, you know, thank, thank you for uh, your show tonight um, for my situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, what's your take so, on that? Can you shed any light on that? Because I was just looking at Beetlejuice well, and the black and white stripe, well, and I'm like, there's some similarity here. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Good thing I'm picking up on that. Um, so I have a quote about cats. Uh, people who don't like cats always seem to think that there is some peculiar virtue in not liking them. And so from there, I'll just, um, well, you know, doggone it. Those uh, Appalachian hillbillies out there in Ohio, I'm from Ohio originally. They've been eating dog breed for centuries. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, know what, what, what you know, what, what the madness is because it, it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of distraction. Really, it's nonsensical. It's total. Uh, it's totally inorganic, and the people who are promoting it have yeah. millions and millions of followers, and they don't care if they're being fact checked. This is what I call brute force mind hacking, because they realize that oh, the, they're just going to force it through. Yeah, I mean the journalism. That that uh, true journalism, that the fact checking ended uh, years ago. I remember there was an article about it. I can't remember where I picked it up about, but how the you know how they were just going to evolve things into news stories and and that you know. I mean, I don't know if you've read any. Uh, I wanted to ask you before if you have read any uh, Nam Nam Chomsky. Uh, I think I did. I think it was manufacturing consent, and uh, is that the one? Yeah, yeah. consent. Yeah. Yes, that's kind of how you know things are bowing down to. I've always had that example in my head from watching the, like you, how you um relate to the wool being pulled over your eyes. I always thought of it like the Christmas story, the kids getting overdressed, and how we always had to put our hats on in the winter. You know, the bully would pull the the wool over your eyes. You know. Yeah. And, yes. Yes. I know the scene. I know the scene. And manufacturing consent, yeah, the right. phrase, it's like, look how we became a total surveillance society, not by forcing cameras into our homes, but by manufacturing the desire to broadcast every waking moment onto TikTok and Facebook and social media. So they, they, they're consistently using mass media to change society in very specific ways. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this whole, you know... Uh, immigrant uh issues and, and you know, a lot of debt issues you know, i always not to not to make a pun on things but you know like the abortion issues they bring up you know that's a dead issue it, it's been it's been dead you know <laughs> and, yeah yes. you know there's, there's, there's ancient abortions were performed when um the tribe had to move on you know, the hunter and gatherer couldn't carry a child and, and you know so they drank a concoction and, and expelled the child and you know it was just it was very thought out and, and done in, in a very thought out manner. You know? but as far as bringing up dead issues and things, and, you know, as far as this immigrant issue and anything, well, you know, you, you mentioned something about how, you, you know, when you were, you went to school and were taught things. Um, well, I was taught, you know, it was called, it was South America for a reason. It's South America. You know, I mean, <laughs> I think we need to start getting over, or, you know, our issues here, you know, move on. 
Well, from there. Uh, uh, and, uh, the abortion thing, know. the abortion thing you bring up, this is a, a big one. Because a lot of things I could bounce around on tonight, but I just... Uh, well, let me, let me um, comment on this one. You, you know, mentioned... It's you mentioned, really frustrating dealing with this. Okay, <laughs> no, know, no, like, listen to this, though. The, the abortion... You know, the, the media the, circus, in a way, you know, and I think my one, uh, my one thought on this whole monkey thing is, you know, it's monkey see, monkey do. You said you want to know what it is. I think it's just fascism. I think it's just fascism, period, and it's fit in. Uh-huh. And if I may say, if I may say one cuss word, it's that that trend that was going on uh, a couple years back. You know, the fit in or fuck off thing, and it's just fascism. And it's, you know, it's now it's like this monkey see, monkey do. You know, and uh, oh yeah, you know yeah. what? I, one of the things I said in 2020 was that what spread the agenda more than anything was fashion. Think about it. What spread it more? Mm-hmm than the fashion statement of the mask you see everybody else wearing it and yep. they're able to coerce you through peer pressure where you see these faces with no mouths just eyes staring at you accusatorily like oh you're not wearing it that's coercion through fashion mm-hmm. just how fashion trends go in schools where everybody picks up the yeah. same trend because they don't want to be out grouped they want to be on the in group so that's definitely a thing they do with opinions these days and they want you like you mentioned abortion oh. they want you to state your opinion so it, they, you can determine, is it fashionable or not? And that issue oh, yeah. was thrown out there with the Roe v. Wade leak the same week that Game of Thrones opened their new season where the queen dies because she wasn't allowed an abortion. So you see how they, they time right. these news events with the movies? And it's like, this is control. It's all controlled. Oh, I've been picking up on for years, and, and yes, it's like... You know, it, it's just, it's so annoying sometimes. And it's like, I, I you know it's just like, and uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there, but yeah, it, it's fascism, fashion. And, um, it's just, uh, you know, this, the, the debate and everything. Well, that's just, you know, we're arguing to make ourselves relevant here, you know, and it's just like, and to take up some of your time, you know, and so you're not thinking about anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, if you think about it, and I've been saying this for a while. They cram seventy-two hours worth of news into every twenty-four hour news cycle. They put so much that if you don't have a good philosophy for approaching media, you'll be overwhelmed. Whereas we're like, we categorically reject fake news so much that it's not hard for us to see clearly. But it's meant to lose you in the information flood. Oh, well, yes, it is. Uh, you know, just like I just suffered through the 9-11, you know, saw some bits of news and things here. And it's like, uh, now there's this Irish theme going on. And, you know, the, the fire, the firefighters were riding bicycles across Ireland in remembrance to 9-11. The Irish firefighters, like, well, what? You know, I'm like, it's like my head ticking, like, what the heck? And then later on, they have this movie on the, the one uh, with the... Um, all the famous ones, I can't remember, but um, oh, uh, all the famous actors in there, and like FBI and the 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 Irish mafia and stuff. They were all in in New York or something, and, uh, and um, oh, they man. mentioned the Patriot Act. Yeah, they mentioned the Patriot Act, and you know that was the movie for the day later on. You know, and it's just yes, it's totally. Um, Synchronous. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's the key. The key to unlocking this is recognizing that the news that we experience, if it's a simulated event, like a big event, and they're simulating it and presenting it as real, you'll find that it's synchronized with past media and even present. The individual hung up. Oh, goodbye. I appreciate the call. So if you were to go to the supermarket you would see Time Magazine with Donald Trump on a golf court going into the sand pit. And it says something about how Kamala Harris has uh, thrown him off his course. And then that's 9-11. You know, then four days later, Trump gets shot at while he's on a golf course. So this is a perfect example of what we talk about here. Uh, we were talking about 9-11 earlier, and I want to bring up some more interesting numbers that were brought up during this Fakeologist podcast. Building 7 was burning for seven hours. 
it collapsed into its own footprint in seven seconds. So building seven, seven hours, seven seconds, kind of lines up with the Flight 77, flying for 77 minutes and hitting the 77 foot tall building, the Pentagon. Again, seven hours, seven seconds. Then the first fragments of the outer walls of the collapsed North Tower struck the ground 11 seconds after the collapse started and parts of the South Tower after nine seconds. A lot of 9-11 and 7-7 encoded into that whole event. And speaking of numerology and numbers, Twitter account 777 is 666 tweeted this, Edward X. Young, who I suspect is JFK Jr. in disguise, will be at the 88th Trump rally on September 18th. Trump's largest venue so far in New York, where JFK Jr. is from. So here's Edward X. Young, who claims to be JFK Jr. He claims it. He says, if you know, you know, and he touches his nose. And he, he's created this perception that this is JFK Jr. in disguise. And this rally on the 18th is Trump's 88th. Let me play this clip here. Good morning, patriotic Americans. This is Edward X. Young, the world's greatest Trump supporter. And I might be somebody else. Infinite Plane Radio. Hey, Tim, it's me, Mango. Turn that down, please. I'm on the phone. How are you? Hey, what's up, Mango Penguins? What's your take on the second attempt on Trump's life? I think it's hilarious. I had no idea that it happened because I'm totally off that stage. My sister over here thinks there are satellites in the sky, and she laughs at me because I'm delusional for some reason in believing you, and I just find it funny as she walked out on the balcony. She's still crippled and recovering from her cracked fibula, but this is fun as hell. I'm just raising it and being loud as because I get drunk, and I love to just, you know, make well, it let, known let, that let, we're all being lied to. Let me give you some ammunition. Anybody who says that it's preposterous when we say we don't believe in satellites, ask them Uh if they know about Loon X. Because Because before before Starlink satellites went up, they had already accomplished everything that Starlink is supposed to be doing. Loon X. With with stratospheric balloons. These balloons in the stratosphere hang there for six months, and they can deliver energy. Okay, got it. They canceled it. They said it's not economically viable. So they just suddenly canceled it, and the next week it's like, hey, Starlink satellites up there. So good, good job. Everything they say that Balloon X. yeah, they could do it with balloons, satellites. Well, you know, my dad he distributed back in the day in the eighties. He he sold those big satellite dishes that would pick up those the satellites with the these uh, video cipher two. I know we had, and he would somebody would fax him a code so that we could just. Get all the channels we wanted to, but we had to move that dish. At one time, it was manually. Then he hooked up a motor to it so we could move it by a switch. And we had to go from different uh, uh, satellites, you know, like SATCOM, F4, and whatnot, different names. But it was weird. And I I was just wondering about the satellite. So, yeah, it would be great if you could just kind of clarify that because she thinks I'm delusional. I know I'm crazy because with what I've done, I've brought forth a lot of truth. Well, listen to this. And it's great. Loon Loon will provide wireless network to remote areas through a set of high-altitude balloons equipped with advanced, sophisticated wireless transceivers to connect people globally. And this technology works without underground infrastructure. So no, yeah. So this exactly like satellite phones. She's bringing up satellite phones. How is this all supposed to work? You know, she's bringing up all these other satellite phones. And she mentioned another satellite. It was just launched today or yesterday. Um, She was bringing this up because she follows the news big time. She's going to vote for Kamala, whatever. My mother, the other. I'm I'm, I'm voting Kamala. Surrounded by stupidity. Just to say I am voting for Kamala, but I'm doing it as a protest vote. Yeah, Yeah, I I know your reason. I'm just, I I toss my registration card i'm not even gonna vote <laughs> i won't even bother with that i won't even bother i uh, raise, raise, raise awareness that your liars are le- your leaders are lying to you that's all there is to it just pass that word on 
and our whispers will spread like wildfire. I know it. We just need to get along and know how to behave better. That's all. Yeah, I I actually agree with you there. Um, but when it comes to like these, these things that people call you crazy or delusional for, I think the best you can do is you can show them how it's fakeable. And I, the word fakeable uh, yeah. is a key component to auto-hoaxing. If you can explain how it can be faked, well, then you have to rule that in and maybe yeah. even rule it out. And you can't okay. rule out that every functionality ascribed to Starlink being, is actually performed in the stratosphere by some balloon, which is what I say. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for what you told me. And, and I appreciate your show and what you're doing for this beautiful community. It's great. So keep on trucking, dude. Awesome. Appreciate the call. Have a great night. All right. Okay. okay. You, you as well. Be safe. safe. We says, Tim, I thought you didn't vote. I never said I didn't vote. Oh, I said voting would be participating in the Psy War if you believe in it. I don't believe in it. It's predetermined. So why would I think my vote matters? The reason I'm voting is because truthers vote for Trump because they don't know that they've been dog whistled and pandered to and cajoled into voting for the GOP. So they're, they're all Republicans. You take a red pill, it's the Republican pill. And I think that's crap. I think that if you're aligning politically and all the major pundits are pro-Trump and they're anti-Kamala, you're in the mind war. So to make my point that voting doesn't matter, I'm voting for Kamala to just kind of trigger people in Trutherville and see who gets mad at me. Like, like if you're mad at me for stealing your, for canceling out your vote for Trump, then you're admitting that you're stuck in Trutherville. And if you're stuck in Trutherville, you'll find it really insulting that I'm voting for Kamala. So, hey, why don't you all do it? Let's all vote for Kamala and let's cancel out the votes of Trutherville just to get under their skin and again, make the point. Because not voting at all doesn't make a statement you think it does. Because there are people who believe in the system who don't vote. I'm saying I don't believe in it, so I'm making a, a statement vote, I guess you could say. It's a, a protest vote in a way. But I'm not protesting against the system. I'm protesting against Trutherville and the reflexive support of anything the GOP tosses out there. The conspiracy theory realm has become very politicized ever since Q. The Q movement turned them all political. Infinite Plane Radio. Hello? Hey, what's up, caller? Uh, nothing. How's it going? This is Trevor Bob. Oh, what's up? Yes, so we're talking about the second attempt on Trump today. Have you heard about that through any mainstream media channels? Uh, no, not really. I, I've, I've seen headlines and my wife said something about it. But uh, what I was really calling about was the, uh, like, I heard y'all talking about cats and stuff a minute ago. And I just kind of had a funny story that happened tonight. I go to this huge uh, church. It's got this huge parking lot. And it's all, uh, I go, you know, in the evening when it's empty. And uh, I go there and work out, you know, and walk and run a few laps and stuff. And tonight there were these foreigners in this little Ford Fiesta driving around. I guess they were trying to learn how to drive. But, man, it was the weirdest thing ever. And in this huge empty parking lot, my car was like one of the only cars in there. And they kept almost hitting it. I like, they kept getting real close to it. And I'm like, what is going on? And they were hitting curves. And I just wanted to tell that little story. I'm going to hop off here. Uh, thanks. Love, Love your show. show. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. And I would be like, okay, foreigners in a car driving bad, scary. Uh, I remember issues with, I've heard about this stuff before. Um, I would be also wary of, of uh, not foreigners, but Americans. Like I think teenagers probably, have you seen these things? They do donuts in the intersections and they, they like running over each other for fun. It's like they're made out of, it's like they're like rubber. It's weird. They're bones. If you look up donuts and intersections, they're always happening in big cities these days. And it looks like escape from L.A., like total uh, uh, bedlam. I mean, just insanity. And, and I see these people getting sideswiped by cars all the damn time. What do they call it? What do they call that type of um, racing where they um, not, not just drag racing, but where they go in circles? They do it here across the street in the Lowe's parking lot. Well, they, they did it for so long 
that now Lowe's has to race out there with a forklift and put crates of uh, manure out there just to prevent this stuff. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, "Write your own candidate in." the The point of not the, the point of it is this: I want to make a vote to trigger a response in the people who think voting matters and are voting for Trump because they think he's going to beat the deep state. I'm doing this as a vote to protest uh, their blind faith in the system and to get them to admit it because I'm trying to get this parallel media separate from people who are still playing in the info war, who are still part of the quote resistance. We says, thanks a lot, Tim, helping to put a reptilian in charge. Oh, wait, the president is not in charge of anything. Well, who's to say that Trump is the good guy in this? Like, are you going to argue that Trump is a good guy and Kamala is the bad guy? And on what basis? If you go on what's been presented, 34 felonies. I mean, I mean, he's He's got a past, real or a fake. But I just like, I, I reject the premise that Trump is the good guy, so we have to support him because we're truthers or something. I'm saying, no, that's garbage. That he's on team, that he and Kamala are the same thing. And they get people to divide over this stuff. Infinite Plane Radio. Hey, hey, dude, this is Jurassic. Jurassic. Hey, Jurassic. So today, uh, 9.15, Trump gets shot at by a guy with the initials RR. Uh, what's your take on it? Anything out of the... Um, the yeah, I have, I have I have a bunch, bunch of stuff. stuff. So, so first, first of all, you know, we always talk about the, the Ronald Reagan shooting. Yes, the, the Hinckley one. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. And I told you that the letters RR is 1818 which is 1818 if you add it up it'd be 216 which is august 4th the 216th day of the year which is also elvis and his identical twins birthday 1818 you know but anyway uh <laughs> let's get that out of the way but then you have ronald his middle name was wesley ronald reagan was wilson which was you know rwr yeah exactly ronald reagan and of course, that's another connection to the Trump shooting. So RWR, fascinating there. And I don't know if you caught this, but Thomas Crooks looks exactly like a young Riddler. And Riddler has been just, uh, his name is Enigma. And Thomas Crooks has been called an Enigma. So there's a lot of Batman uh, Riddler connection to this whole thing. But anyway, this shooting tonight, no, I, didn't... I wasn't expecting anything today out of the ordinary, but there's a lot of predictive programming for 10-4 because Joker 2. And I was thinking 10-4, October 4th, that's still kind of an 8-4. Do you think it's possible? Well, you know, I don't think they're going to do it on 10-4, but anything's possible. Yeah. But you know, I'm waiting till August 4th next year, but, but you know, I have that June 11th event prediction for uh, Washington state on June 11th. But anyway, look, Here's, here's what I called him for. So you had the Ronald Wilson Reagan connection. His name was Ryan Wesley Ruth, whatever. So you have the RWR. And remember, they thought Reagan was the, was the Antichrist because he had six letters in each of his names, right? Ronald Wilson Reagan was 666, right? He also lived at 666 St. Cloud in Bel Air, Reagan, but they, uh, but later they changed it to 668. And also, that stupid Nancy Reagan, his wife, was into, you know, seances and all this nonsense, conjuring up the dead or something. But uh, that's right. That's right. His wife was uh, a necromancer. And here he is. He lived at 666 St. Cloud in Bel Air. Bel Air is kind of interesting in itself because Bel and Ball, Prince of the Powers of Air. I've, I've seen some coding with Bel Air quite a lot, but this is interesting here, 666. Yeah, and, and of course, we all know that the guy who got shot when Reagan got shot, James Brady, he, he lived, he, James Brady got shot in the head, lived 33 years after he gets shot in the head, he survived, lives 33 years, then ends up dying on 8-4. So we have all this connection with Ronald Reagan. And by the way, the shooting happened on 3-30. So it's the 33 again with the codes and they he dies 33 years later on august 4th so we 
we've already been through this whole thing with Ron Reagan and and August fourth and the Brady getting shot in the head connection with Trump. But and Ronald sounds like Donald, right? But now let's get to the more important thing. Uh, so this shooter, uh, <laughs> you got to type this in. Put put type the shooter's name, Ryan Ruth. And then, then type, type in, in at real Donald Trump. Trump. Uh, yeah, yeah, at real, real Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Okay. And, and and then see the see, see what he said, said to Donald, Donald Trump, Trump and, and look at the date. Okay, Ryan Ruth Ryan's posts. And hey, really look, look at the picture. picture. Okay, look at the picture. picture. Okay, okay. Yeah, look at the picture. Image. And they look at the tweet of the image, like it's an image of the tweet. Here he goes. I'm, I'm looking for this tweet really quick. And really quick here, too. Uh, you mentioned the Iran animation with the drone view of Trump getting shot on a golf course. And you said Iran would be targeting Trump on a golf course. And this guy's name is Ryan. So do you see that the Ryan Iran kind of an interesting absolutely you see that absolutely I, I could see that with the Ryan absolutely yeah so there's something there okay I'm look I'm trying to find this um if you look for a picture because I just typed that in and I found it right away the very first picture oh okay here it is here it is you... okay real Donald Trump while you were my choice in 2016 I and the world hoped that Trump would be different and better than the other candidate. We're greatly disappointed. It seems you're getting worse and devolving. Are you R worded? I will be glad when you're gone. 611. 611. Okay, yes. I see what you're there saying. It is. Trump was shot at 611, yeah. and this guy threatens Trump uh, kind of directly. 611. Fascinating. Good find there. Yep. Yeah, that was on 611 when he sent that tweet. So I don't know if, if, the, if the, the news has been showing that at all. I'm not sure about that, but it, but it would be funny if that was the only tweet that he made to Trump, because you know, that was to Donald Trump directly at Donald Trump, you know. And yep. so I'm not sure, but that's interesting that it was 611. Now, I just saw on another channel that the guy did an interview. Yes. Yes. You want to? Yes. Uh, he went on. He went on TV. He did a interview. I think it was in. Where was it? I have it translated and you let's see and pull this up in ukraine yes what do you mean translated oh. well no i got the first post of it was um oh okay it needs to be translated i just saw the whole video i just saw the whole video it was 11 minutes long the guy was some ukrainian was interviewing him and asking him why you're here supposedly he was in ukraine and the guy sounds so legit like as if he's not acting you know so I don't know. I mean, the guy just might be some kind of lunatic who went there. I mean, and they used him in this thing. You know, they were probably going to throw him in jail you know, or something. Like he could be a legit patsy. Like he does seem that clueless. Uh, possible. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, do they scrape these people out of um, asylums? But shooting suspect Ryan but Routh was on a video from Ukraine, and he said he wanted to kill Putin. And so it makes sense. This is like on brand that he would make an attempt on Trump. Well, I'm just saying, if you look at the guy, the way he's talking, he seems like he's not reading from a script. You know, so I don't know whether they really taught this guy really good before they did the interview. But, you know, to me, he's just another uh, look. If you look at the guy, he looks like he's trying to get into transitioning if you know what i'm trying to say yeah I, I don't know what i'm seeing here he's wrapped in the american flag so I'm, I'm looking at him very closely but one of the things i do with these characters is i look at all the initial photos they blast because they're trying to give you a first impression and one of the images it's like he's got his sh his hands up and his shirt is pulled up halfway over his torso so, he's a perfect candidate for a transitioner, if you understand what I'm saying, because that's what most of these shooters are, is transitioners. Well, he doesn't have a bowl cut, so he might be another trans shooter. Fascinating. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, great hey, great information here, great find. The 611 making this somewhat um, intimation that Trump deserves to get 
And he says here, I'm willing to fly to Ukraine and die for its people, and everyone around the globe should do the same. Come on, people. Uh, yeah, uh, loony leftist. Looney leftist, unequivocally. This is going to be... This is actually... But just, did you watch the video? Did you watch the video? I listened to him rant for a minute. Oh. Okay. But I'll, I'm going to play like 30 seconds of it. So if anyone hasn't heard this, this is the shooting suspect. And here he is last year. And he's talking... I'm going to play 30 seconds. Here with the Ukrainians. This, this Maiden Square, Independent Square, we should have millions of people in this square, filling the square from every country well, around the world. Well, you know, we don't hear and it. while we don't, I don't understand. I'm right. here every day with all the flags from all the supporting countries, with the memorials for the people that have died. And, you know, I've had several people come. Okay, wait, there's something else here, his hair. So half of it's dyed, half isn't. There's something very, right. something weird about that it, as far as like. Well, it's, it's kind of like saying divided, like he's doing the splitting it in half thing, you know. Yeah, very, very Civil War-ish. And, and of course, yeah, yeah the, the split down the middle and the American flag shirt. Uh, I, I think he looks like a made-up character uh, in a role, but very somebody, interesting. Somebody in the chat, somebody in the chat said Ronald McDonald was born on August 4th. If that's true, I don't think it's true, but if, I think they were just uh, messing with us. But that would be crazy if it was true. I'm going to look it up. Was Ronald McDonald yeah. born on 8-4? <laughs> Um, let's see here. Ronald McDonald uh, birth date. Oh, that would be crazy. If that was true. Okay. On May 1st, Ronald McDonald was born to two entrepreneurs. May day, uh, major pagan holiday. His birthday is September 18th. So Ronald McDonald's oh, okay. birthday is on 18th, on the 18th, which is the date that oh, Trump's going to have. His, yeah. Yeah. A big rally in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, man, I, look, we know that it's, it's not what it is, that's for sure. That's all we know. Oh, and yeah, you were talking about the Iran thing. Yeah, if you show that video of, of how Iran was supposedly sending that video to threaten Trump, I mean, you could show it again, it's up to you. But if you have nothing else to say, then I'll just exit. No, no, absolutely. Iran Supreme Leader makes an online video, and I played it before, and if anyone hasn't seen it, this is a video that shows a mock drone strike of Trump while he's on a golf course. I'll, I'll just play a short clip of it in case anyone hasn't seen it yet. And this is just a clear example of, I think, Iran being thrown into the mix here as a potential source of it. But yes, here it is. And of course, the reason I'm mentioning that. Yeah, go ahead. I'm playing it with the sound off because it's just a video. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's why I was talking and the reason i'm mentioning that is because i because of the fact that that i believe that the next one will not be a live incident because if they i don't know how they're going to get away with it doing it live when they do the real uh trump you know ear <laughs> head thing so that's why they need to do it uh, you know they set setting the stage that he's actually a target and that's why it could be a drone that they use makes a lot more sense that way because they could not allow a failed squib or a glitch in performance in the magic trick to screw up the psy up of the century. And if this is meant to be a psychological 9-11 hitting everybody, it's got to be an impactful video. And it's far more likely it's going to be something that can be fixed post-production and then presented to us. So I'm with you on that. It's, it's likely could be behind closed doors and then we're shown and, and after. And yeah, and it can't be some, and it can't be uh, anyone who can get close to him and just take out a, a you know, a, a weapon. I just, that's why they're, uh, you know, he's going to have too many guards now, especially with the second one now, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, what, how many more are they going to do before they have, you know, him in an armored, you know, <laughs> tank 24 hours a day? Right, right. Now, um, we've been talking about this, this um, wrestling match with, with Umaga and Kamala and Maga winning. And I've been thinking about it in the civil war, the movie civil war, uh, the Trump character is in the white house. And then they have the black female soldiers shoot him. So it's kind of open here as to whether, um, he wins and it's heavily disputed or if she steals it in some way. But I'm thinking now looking at it very closely, 
it looks like he wins and she remains a strong leader or Obama, the whole left is like completely against him, but it looks like he doesn't win clean in their eyes. If that's how it plays well, out. Well, yeah, that's what I was telling you that he gets elected, but somehow the creature Kamala and, and Biden, then they do some kind of antics to, to stop this from happening, either starting a war or, or, or civil war, or who knows? Because I know those people are going to go berserk when Trump wins the election. There's just no way they're going to accept it. Because especially, that's why I said that they're going to do their uh, version of the January 6th. Yeah, you know? yeah. and the other day I said something like, uh, the Swifties will rise up and burn this place down. And I tweeted this morning that maybe it was a Swiftie that shot at Trump. And supposedly one of his tweets, and I'm trying to find it, in one of his tweets, he said, I love Taylor Swift. And today, Trump tweeted, I hate Taylor Swift. So there's this antagonism. Think about how that reaches. How many fans does she have who are now being antagonized by Donald Trump? There's no, yeah, there's no way a president would ever say, I hate. Because that would be so, that's like, like, you know, that's not, that's a horrible thing to say, I'm saying. So it, it would have been more likely a scenario for him to say, uh, that uh, she's crazy, you know, for voting, she's evil, it, you know, whatever. But you don't say the word hate. That sounds like literally like he's purposely triggering the, the other side, which, which, you know, you would think oh, what you just wait said. Wait a minute. Would... Now you're right about that because recently uh, Taylor Swift had, had canceled some concerts because of threats. So there's something up with that. There's something out, something with, uh... yeah, and 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 you know the I Pet Goat video, which I've explained to you guys, that I Pet Goat video is Taylor Swift, the girl who drops the apple, okay. And you know my take on that, right, Tim? Uh, what what's your take on it, that? It, for for uh, I know what you're talking well, about. Well, though. you know the video, but you know the I Pet Goat video, right? Absolutely, I think we've all seen that image too of the uh, blonde girl holding the apple. And the apple is a symbol of a few things, but um, yeah, here she is, like Persephone in a way, it almost looks like a pomegranate. But yeah, here she is on the chair floor. Yeah, and she's holding the apple, right? Yes. Okay, so when she she all of a sudden she falls asleep or dies, and she drops the apple, okay, and then the apple rolls, and and I've explained that the apple is connected to Washington state because Washington state is the apple state. They're going to crack. And, the, and then the apple cracks, you know, but it first hits Obama's boot. Obama's born on August 4th, which is when Trump gets his head wound, but the apple comes back and it's letting you know that it's, uh, this, the cracking is going to happen between a certain time and August 4th. You get what I'm saying? They're giving you a timeline and the crack, the apple cracks into the letter C. The, it, it, there's a C on the ground, and it cracks into the C half of it because that's what they're going to do. They're going to crack Washington State into the C. half of it into the C. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, this, and, this is interesting. Like the CC writer breakdown you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and Elvis is the beast out of the C, right? And uh, Kamala, there's a, a, a lotus that comes up out of the apple. And Kamala means lotus, right? Her name. And and Trump gave a lotus to the Pope. You know, the statue, you know, whatever the hell. Fascinating. Lotus flower. Yeah. Lotus but, flower. But, okay. But let me just explain the Taylor Swift thing. So that's why if something does happen to Taylor Swift, it would make sense. You know, and and remember, she loves the number 13, right? And in that uh, in that classroom scene in I Pet Goat, she's the 13th girl. The, the 12 people behind her is the 12 kids. She's the 13. Okay, yes, yes. And for people who don't know, everything about Taylor Swift is 13, and she was in the movie called Amsterdam, and at exactly 13 minutes, she gets pushed into the street and gets killed. So she's always connected with 13, which is a lunar goddess number, 13 lunar months. She's been connected to Princess Diana, like she's the Princess Di of this generation. And Princess Diana is known for what? Crashing into the 13th pillar? 
Uh, she's being yeah, compared to Am go. Amelia Earhart, who died at sea. And she's being compared to Marilyn Monroe. She's been compared to female icons who die. And one more thing, in Leave the World Behind, they have this scene where they show this girl in a blue bikini who looks like Taylor Swift, and her name is Taylor. And they're describing how they don't know where she is, seeming to intimate that her plane crashed at sea or something. So there has been wow. predictive programming yeah. in the last year for something happening to Taylor. And then last month, or in August, uh, a number of shows were canceled in Vienna because there was a plot for a suicide bomber to run in there. Yeah, real quick, let's not forget why Taylor Swift is in this, because the creature, that's what this whole scenario was about the 13, because she was at the 13th, uh, the, the Super Bowl game where the Chiefs won was the 13th time she was at the at his game. That was the 13th football game she went to, the Super Bowl one, okay? Oh, and, oh, yeah, that's right. It was her 13th yeah. Chiefs game that she attended, and it was the Super Bowl after a 13-hour right. flight from Japan. Right. And who, and who is the creature dating? She's dating Elvis Presley. Travis Kelsey. Sounds like Elvis Presley, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and who did he and, – and, and they win the Super Bowl, and the first thing he does, he holds the trophy, and what is – the first thing he does, he sings – Viva Las Vegas, an Elvis song. So he's sitting there singing uh, Elvis while he's holding the trophy. And the trophy is the Vince Lombardi trophy. Vince Lombardi was born on June 11th. So basically he's telling you that, the, that June 11th is the trophy that when, when Elvis, you know, sings his swan song, basically. You get what I'm trying to say. That's the, that's the trophy, you know? Yeah, okay, so the trophy... And 611 is the birth date. You're talking about the um, Super Bowl award. Vince Lombardi. Li true. Vince Lombardi. Yeah. And then um, I've, I've also been thinking, because there was some predictive programming in, it was in some Tom Cruise movie I, where he goes to space and he goes to this, he goes down to earth, the ground, and it's this nuked out stadium. And I, I was thinking about touchdown. There's some kind of a touchdown reference here. But yeah, again, there, there's, I'll have to dig that up. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, I've, I've said this many times, uh, Taylor Swift's favorite numbers are 13 and 31 because the one three backwards is 31, right? You know that, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In fact, uh, yeah. Didn't so her favorite numbers. Yeah, 13, 31, well, the, the reversal, because uh, I believe Diana died on, was it August 31st? 31st, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and so her, her favorite numbers are 13 and 31. But, if, you know, first number, of course, obviously, the more important is the 13 for her. But 13, 31 is her favorite numbers. And I told you, everything connects to the 611. The sixth prime number is 11. The 13th prime number is 31. You see what I'm saying? It's so perfect. You, you can't make this stuff up, man. Well, look at this. 12 years ago... This is in 2012. Taylor Swift made a very public display of mourning for Diana at that memorial spot. And I believe there's a pentagram built in the ground there. I have to look. It's like a five-pointed star and a torch. And the pentagram associated with witchcraft, like the number 13. And I was told this by someone who was into the stuff that they, um, the apple, you split it in half. You have a five-pointed star right in the middle. And this is highly significant to various goddess um, uh, goddesses like Eris and others where the pentagram is sacred to goddesses and the apple is kind of tied and, into that. And, and let me just uh, solidify why she's the, she's the iPad goat girl besides uh, it being the 13th person in that, uh, you know, when in the classroom, she's the 13th girl who drops the apple. She won uh, apple entertainer of the year. Okay right before 2024 it was at the end of 2023 she won apple entertainer of the year apple music and you know who does uh the super bowl is apple music halftime show okay so the so everything's about the apple and i told you that you know washington is the apple state right and um oh man i lost my well, train well, of thought. Yeah, there was well, something I was gonna say. Go well, but again you did mention though 
that the apple breaks and it has the C, which is a symbol of Washington breaking and part of it falling into the C. Uh, so Taylor Swift, though, being threatened, uh, Taylor Swift being this iconic character to the left, just endorsing Trump and Trump saying, I hate her. Anything happens, it's going to be pinned on him. A mind virus, you know, just like the cat rumors triggered a re response. Trump saying that now can be used as a justification for any kind of a psyop, which would totally inflame the left. Man, keep talking, man, because I've completely lost my train. I have something important to say. I need to figure it out. Okay, well, we're talking about right. We're talking about Ryan Routh, who made an attempt on Trump at the golf course, and he made a seeming threat on six eleven. Um, he's got the Joker hair, which is typical of what we'd expect from one of these shooters. Crazy eyes, Joker hair. This is so many. This is amazing too. The story is only a few hours old, and we have so much information about him already. We have all of his tweets, his social media, an entire media package here. It's, this is such a PR stunt. Uh, the name Ryan we were talking about, Ryan Iran, just kind of a interesting detail. I've also been looking into numbers of 9-11, and someone had mentioned this. So 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. And you had the whole thing with the fire department, 343, the firefighters who uh, died that day. And now they're saying that 343 have died since of 9-11 illness. So another 343. Three. There's so many ridiculous, uh, repetitive uses of, of numbers with 9-11, and it's, it goes even deeper than I thought. I was listening to Fakeologist and Building 7, oh. Seven Second Okay, fall, just real seven, quick. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, man. Let me... So this is what happened. So after she won Apple... Uh, uh, you know, the Apple award for being entertained of the year, the very first thing, the very first biggest story in 2024, this year, New Year's Day, is she broke Elvis Presley's record, Taylor Swift, for, for the most longest having a Billboard 200. It was the, the only biggest story, the very first one of, of the New Year's was that story. Oh, okay? I see that. Okay, January 2nd, here it goes. Taylor Swift passes Elvis Presley's record no, it was actually January 1st. It, it all, happened on the... It, yeah, yeah. yeah, I see that. I see that here. More popular than Elvis. Okay, so I missed that. Yeah. And yeah. and yeah. she just received, I believe, uh, it was 30... Was it her... She was 33 when she received a Grammy. So this... Yeah, well, yeah that's what I'm getting to, just real quick. So they took down the I Pet Goat video um, back on September 5th, which is very important because it connects to a lot of things I'm talking about with my birthday and stuff because I was born on 9-4, but it landed on 9-5 because it was a leap year. But listen, uh, so they took down the I Pet Goat video, the Helia Font channel, who made the video. They took it down on 9-5. She goes to the Grammys dressed as the Apple girl. Look at her, her uh, you know, the Apple girl uh, in the video is got her hair to the side wearing a white dress, right? Yes, yes. Look at her at the Grammys. She's wearing a white dress with her hair sideways, okay? Interesting. And so Taylor Swift, the Grammys, looks just like the girl from My Pet Goat. I see that same hair. Okay. So, so what they, so after she wins her 13th Grammy, and then she won a 14th that night, but she won her 13th Grammy that night, the I Pet Goat people loaded their video back up onto the channel that day. Oh, that okay. night. Okay. They okay. Put it up. okay. Okay. Or the very next day, they reloaded it. Okay. So they were telling you, they're telling you, they gave you a timeline. So as soon as they hit, as soon as she, because uh, they're trying to tell you it's connected to her, okay? And they, they reloaded that video when the creature won the Grammy that night. That's all I was trying to, you know, make. Fascinating. Come up with. Now, yeah, there, there's a lot in this because she turns 33, she wins this thing. And on that night, Beyonce won her 33rd Grammy. So you have this thing where they both have the 33 attached. She's 33, Beyonce has the 33rd. And then there were some who were saying that Beyonce should have won it, not her, which goes back to Ye, who also interrupted Taylor getting an award. But the connection here is the Taylor-Beyonce thing. There's some kind of dialectic here. Not quite sure what, but remember, it was Beyonce who was playing in the 
Super Bowl 47 when they had the 33 minute blackout. And so there's something up here with these two artists that night getting the and, Grammy Award. Yeah. yeah, and Beyonce's born on my birthday, 9-4. That's what I'm saying, because 9 4 nine, five is very important, which connects to the America's age being 247, 248, 249. I'm just saying, from this year, next year, uh, it's 248, 249 years old. But forget about that. You're not going to understand that. Anyway. But um, uh, Let me bring this up really quick. 4.8 earthquake hits New Jersey near Trump National Golf Course. So the epicenter of this earthquake was reported to have been at Trump's uh, golf course, 4-8. So on 4-8, there was that Trump ad where his head eclipses the sun. If you recall his eclipse ad, we will save right, America. Right. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a connection here with the 4-8 date, the 4.8 magnitude earthquake, and 4.8 mag, like MAGA, and then, of course, his yeah. head over the sun. This was all... Um, foreshadowing yeah, but there's the, even more. There's even more connection to that uh, 4.8 earthquake. Uh, it happened in an area called White House. Interesting. I, something to do with White House. I showed it. I don't know if you can bring that up or find it. I can't remember. It's something to do with White House. I'll the area, the 4.8 White House uh, earthquake. Okay, Trenton, see New Jersey. I'll, I'll see what I can. Oh yeah, White House Station. It's New Jersey near White House Station. That's where it's centered at 1023 a.m. White there House. You go. Interesting. Yeah, that's another connection. That's another connection to Trump, you know, getting his head wound while he's in the White House. Okay, okay. Yeah. So in the movie Civil War, a 2024 movie, he gets – the Trump character gets shot while he's in the White House. And one more point here. If you remember uh, the recently released Alec Baldwin shot – Joel Souza, who had the birthday, 614, Trump's birthday. But he did it in that house, in that chapel. And I connected that chapel to the White House Chapel, the White Chapel in Westworld, but also to the White House. Because Alec Baldwin, before he shot those two people, he had said publicly he wanted a meteor to hit the White House. And I was like, that's weird, because the movie Don't Look Up is about a comet about to hit the Earth in six months, 14 days, which is Trump's birthday. And then Baldwin shoots this guy... So I kind of connected this, the White House being impacted. And I'm thinking now in the Civil War movie, the Trump-like character is in the White House when he's killed. Yeah, you, me, you look, man, both of us have got this thing down perfectly, the, met, the script that's about to play out. You know, but we, we disagree on a few things. But uh, so just look, let's, let's end it with this because we could go on all night with this. But uh, what... So do you, so do you really think that Kamala is going to win the forty? You know, I mean, you know, looking at it now, having re-examined okay. the Civil War narrative, in that movie, uh -huh. he's in the White House, and that's the cause of the Civil War. Now it makes more sense because there's every indication that Kamala is seen as the viable, as the true leader. DMZ is one in particular, but also in Fallout. So there's this storyline, this thread that he still occupies it, but she's still the leader to at least half or something like that. So the Civil War story's there. And in the Civil War movie, the guy's in the White House and they have to get there and they have to fight their way in. And then they wait until the black female soldier gets in and they let her do the dirty work. So that to me is symbolic of the, the left going after Trump, obviously Kamala. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just say my last take on this, and then I'm going to end it. But uh, so I believe that Trump wins the election, and they go, they go, you know, berserk the liberals and the and the Democrats, and they, like you said, they might contest it or, or, you know, and or whatever. They just go berserk, right? And then they're not going to allow it, and then it just keeps going and going. The protests and you know a recount, they want to recount, the recount, you know, they probably have to do it, right? They're going to have to probably do a recount. And, 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 then, and then when Inauguration Day comes, it never happens because the protests just keep happening and it's getting probably worse or something and it never even takes place. And somehow Kamala is a big possibility that she becomes president. They take out 
of uh, Biden with the 25th Amendment, and because we're in the 25th year next year, so it wouldn't be surprising that they would use the 25th Amendment on him to get him out and put her in, and then somehow uh, Trump makes a coup to get in, you know. And it's just all hell breaks loose. Like, we'll see. Easily, Like I easily. said, I'm just guessing. Well, listen yeah, to this. So guessing. Esquire.com said, the ending of Civil War Explained, the final stretch shows Western forces staging an attack on the White House with the intent to kill the president. So this movie takes place when America has already split, and there's a union between, like, California and Texas. So this movie does have this idea of Trump getting in the office unlawfully or perhaps – viewed by many but uh this is predictive programming at its finest and looking at it now in this present context i think you may be right i think you may be right maga beats uh kamala you maga all right bro all right man take care yeah great call great information thanks again all right bye-bye all right well this is a, a major plot twist Anx G says, JL scenario sounds very likely. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Because tr there's no way Trump can just disappear from the world stage without this big event happening. And it's too predicted. It's, it's saturating the collective psyche. We're ready for it. The public is ready to accept it. Good call. The 611 connection. So Trump is shot at 611. And then you've got this shooter tweeting at Trump that he should be removed. I'll be glad when you're gone. 611. We talked about the Riddler connection to Thomas Crooks. The Enigma, which is the name of the Riddler. All right, so the main topic today, though, has really been, I mean, we've been talking about a few things, but I've been using the phrase, the term, the sentence. I guess we'll just refer to this. I'll put it in the lexicon. Uh, brute force mind hacking. Uh, brute force hacking, trial and error, throw everything, see what sticks. And we're experiencing brute force mind hacking because a lot of the people who are skeptical about the other shooting are probably just going to accept this one. Thank you for feeding the crack, Gwyn. Nicotromus. IPS appreciates the support. He says, JL's calls are the best. Yeah, and, and to me, again, like he says, it's not about, we have different views, for sure. But there's still time. And I will correct my ways. I will adjust my trajectory based on new facts, new information. Predictive programming-wise, Kamala is in the picture. And, it has, and it's been this way for a long time. She's born on the day Herbert Hoover dies. Herbert Hoover libraries where Gerald Ford predicted her emergence. But that doesn't mean she wins this election. It means something else. And I think what it means is, like the movie Civil War, it's going to come true. That movie is likely the scenario that they're going to portray for us. Uh, Trump saying, I hate Swift. I hate Taylor Swift. I would really have to listen to the records and know some more about this to actually hate the person. Trump says, I hate Swift, NPR, Washington Post, Trump, po they probably haven't even commented on the assassination attempt, CBS, NPR, Washington Post, but they're all saying, I hate Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift getting love from celebrities, Harris Waltz campaign responds to Trump's, I hate Taylor Swift. So this is a new story right now. The Harris Waltz campaign referenced 28 Taylor Swift songs in a statement Sunday in response to Donald Trump's comments the same day. The statement titled Trump's Bad Week. We're pretty sure it's safe and sound to say Donald Trump's week has him down bad. Mr. Not at all fine has spent his week working through his feelings, whining about his champagne problems and spending none of his time addressing the issues facing the American people. So in the course of this letter, they use 28 different Taylor Swift songs. 28. So that's uh, 
a long list. I'm not going to read the entire letter, but that didn't take long. They composed a letter with 28 songs. Maybe they used chat GPT. But the only reason we're reading this is because we're meant to. This is being projected onto the collective psyche, just like last year, Taylor Swift. I, and I put a moratorium on talking about her. But now look, look where we're at. Now we're here. Phones are still open for a little while. We're just kind of, I'm catching up on comments. A lot of people are seeming to think that JL's take on it is accurate. We have 200 and it's just kind of a, an estimate at a minimum 230 listening. I think we're closer to, to 280. Lewis Albert Jr. says Taylor's a dude. Uh, I, I don't buy into that stuff. And here's why. Because if that's true, then Donald Trump's a woman. It's just, it's, it's gaslighting. They're gaslighting truthers. They're like Ronald Reagan was a woman. Donald Trump's a woman. Like I have a hard time accepting that for a lot of reasons. Uh, namely, there's no way he gave birth to Baron Trump when he was 60. Like you have to take your assertion and reason it through. Like if true, what must also necessarily be true? And if you have to rule that out for it to be true, then maybe you have to examine your premise and start over again. And Trutherville is full of auto-believers, people who don't need a lot of information to believe anything. And that's a problem as well. That's why I left Trutherville. They will believe anything. A breaking Donald Trump was tackled by Secret Service when he was on the fifth hole. So he was on hole number five. Don't know if that means anything. Uh, here's what I mentioned earlier with Synchromorpheus. It just exploded. Springfield woman claims she never meant to spark the false rumors about Haitians. Then you have the cat snowball. And the word snowball, the phrase, uh, I mean, the word snowball means this. To increase rapidly in size, intensity, or importance. So again, just to reiterate here, what we are looking at is an example for the public to see of a mind virus spreading from Facebook, causing real life problems. And in this case, you have hate groups marching in Ohio as a result of it. There's quite a lot going on elsewhere. The right wing implosion is ongoing. They're creating a lot of chaos. I talked about this movie briefly. I may watch it. It's called Speak No Evil. And Speak New Evil is inspired by Andrew Tate. This movie just came out on the 13th. So everything we're seeing about Andrew Tate's fall from grace is likely contrived and fake. Just a, another world stage phony. In fact, more and more comes out and it's revealed that everybody who followed that guy was a dupe. Ifepe73 said, I saw a tweet today suggesting Kamala might be played by J-Lo. The, the thing with that is that you have video of Kamala Harris going back years. Like, she's got a track record. She didn't just emerge out of nowhere. We says Snowball was described in Clerks as well. Well, Snowball the Cat is a topic right now because we're talking about Springfield, where the Simpsons are. I should have asked JL while he was here about the other Sopranos connections. So here you got Tony Soprano, another bad Don, with a bandage on his ear. And I think it was Sopranos episode 84 was just loaded with symbolism. The second coming. That was one of the connections. Uh, obviously a lot more. 19th episode. So, uh, anyway, the, the predictive programming just goes back so far because everything is scripted in advance. Your history's already been written. They're making history. They have a history-making monopoly. There is a worldview monopoly. Whatever you do is going to be deleted eventually if it's not part of their program. Okay, here's something else. This is what I want to show you. This is an astronaut in space, supposedly. 
and he's got a big vein on his forehead, which would kind of suggest that he's hanging upside down. Oh, the, sorry, wrong link. This is a, a link for a song called Tomato Head uh, because the individual's face is turning red. I, I got into this debate with somebody about what we're looking at. And I suggested to him, his name was King Frustrated. I suggested to him that we're looking at special effects when we're looking at these astronauts supposedly flipping around. And he said to me, I'm very literate in special effects. They can do wonderful things when you do multiple takes and splice them together. But on a live stream, not so much. So I countered with, maybe you should research stage magic. Stage magic is basically live special effects that involve optical illusions. So we've had this back and forth over what we're really looking at here. And we're looking at a vein popping out of this guy's forehead as he hangs upside down. Stuff we've commented on before, the way they sit or stand rather when they're floating, their arms are usually awkwardly crossed across their chest uh, because they're hiding something. The fact that they're dangling, it's like a gallows. But there are people who are on the side of this being real and it couldn't be special effects. And I think that's an important point to get into. So again, King Frustrated and I had this back and forth and he said, in order to do what he did, and we're just talking about a somersault, he would need harnesses, and one cannot, in a live stream, complete that with wires and special effects. It is impossible. So he suggests that it would be impossible to do a flip on live TV because you would have to do some post-production work. Not true. You can chroma key out the green cords or whatever color they are. But what I... I countered with was you state that there are things within the realm of special effects that are unachievable. The fallacy at work here is argument from ignorance and incredulity. McToon said the way he twisted and rotated is not possible with wires. So McToon, a top tier glurf, full time anti flat earther on YouTube, he says it would be impossible for somebody to rotate or twist around with wires. So what I proposed here is that he's pro-offering us a straw man argument, even an either or argument, like it must be wires or it can't happen at all. It's like, that's not exactly true either. So that's another kind of a fallacious approach, but these individuals are defending the indefensible and it's rather comical because they have to, basically forced themselves not to see. So I showed him how you can indeed perform these things. You can see these things perform live. I cited as a sort of a mic drop, Kate Perry floating around at the Video Music Awards and you couldn't see the wires. It was totally believable. So would that necessarily have required that they are all in outer space? Well, no. Ladies and so here's Penn and Teller and you can't tell, but they're upside down. We could do it all, but we haven't got the money. We don't think the magicians are judged by their pocketbooks. We think they're judged by their skill. So I'll this is from Saturday Night Live back in 1986. And this is the same level of special effects that NASA is still using today. So here they are on live TV. And look at this. Hand, and then she's gone. <laughs> we'll go one step further, Mr. Copperfield. We will... Little objects are flying up out of their hands. Everything they bring up just vertically shoots up. So what is causing this? Well, you can't see it, but they're in a specially rigged stage and they're upside down. So here we are looking at the camera backing up. They're actually hanging by their feet. They're upside down. And the camera has done a flip. So this is what we're seeing. A lot of special effects on the ISS. It's special effects, it's not zero G, and the people defending it are kind of pretending to be ignorant. Like there's no way they could fake that. All you have to do is watch Netflix, watch science fiction, you can see what they're faking. Anyway, I wouldn't want that gig.
Messianic Charlatan said, I saw Tate yesterday for the first time due to an unfortunate retweet, and his whole body looks rubbery. Supposedly, he's a kickboxing champion. Messianic Charlatan says, Andrew Tate is speak of evil Anton LaVey. Now, that's very interesting. I have noticed, and you've brought this up to me before, that Anton LaVey, and I, I think you could argue that Andrew Tate does espouse a Levian philosophy in most ways. Here it is. This is an actual video. Anton LaVey is Andrew Tate. Yeah, like reincarnated. Fascinating connection. Uh, a cipher from the Matrix. And that's kind of the idea, you know, with Anton LaVey. The idea is that you're meant to love the Matrix. You're meant to, not to be ascetic, not to be like, you know, religious uh, morality shouldn't get in the way of you enjoying your life. So Anton LaVey, Cypher, there's, it's about worldliness, which is exactly what Tate's about. And Tate's always talking about the Matrix. But the speak no evil thing would be another fascinating connection because, uh, of course, we're talking about Anton LaVey, who had a, his, his last book was called Satan Speaks. And then he died. So Speak No Evil is based on Tate. And then let's look at Satan Speaks. So Satan Speaks, a collection of 60 humorous essays by Anton LaVey. Fascinating. Infinite Plane Radio. Hey, what's going on? I was just going over this very uh slow news day another day another fake shooting at trump oh yeah am i live or something oh yes uh we are live there's about 235 people in video and another 50 or so another 50 okay, or so. I got a question. yeah what's your question okay all this uh <clears throat> excuse me all this gematria and we're like coded and all this stuff Who's doing that? Is that like Satan or is that like God warning us or what is it? Uh, I, is it I, just... I used to think, okay, some people used to suggest that, that there's, this is uh, synchronistic occurrences, some kind of a warning from the universe, the zeitgeist reflecting through symbols or something. But I think we've narrowed it down. It's the occult language of the uh -huh. power elite. It's basically that. It's, it's what you would call esoteric. You have the exoteric, yeah, esoteric, so and so it's it's deliberate though, but it's put there by the people at the capstone level of this mind control program, and they're one hundred percent plugged in to the ancient mystery Babylon paradigm for some reason. So it's I wouldn't say satanic, but it's definitely uh, pantheistic and magical um, in their in their worldview. Mm -hmm. So the, are they using AI, or are they just programming up these events and doing them on special times and? At, to the split second and all that. All right. the, okay, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, one of the things they're doing, and this became clear after 2020, is they are coordinating things with astrology, astrological align, astronomical alignments. This is how they're so precise. 9-11 starts off at 846, for example. Uh, the Great Reset began with a great conjunction of Jupiter-Saturn, 1221, 2020. So what they're doing is they're writing stuff in advance, but in order to be synchronized globally... Well, the, at the very top, they're aligned with the stars. So they have very precise alignments. It's very possible. For, for example, George Floyd was kneeled on for 846, like the same time that 9-11 was hit. Well, 846 on that day, that's 525, 2020 in the Twin Cities, the sun set at 846. And there's a significance between the death of the sun god and the George Floyd killing and that number. And so... Yeah, it's, it's definitely the case that man's doing it, but these individuals are tied in to astrology and, and up on astronomy. Uh, have you heard of the uh, re research in Satan's little season? Uh, of, what, uh, Revelation why don't you fill me in on this one? Because um, a number of people have mentioned this to me. Well, okay, the, um, I'm, a, I'm a preterist. I'm not a 
a futurist. So a futurist believes that all of Revelations is the future, but a preterist believes that it's our, 70 A.D. Nero was the Antichrist. If you if you decode his name, Caesar Nero is the only you know it decodes only in Hebrew, not in any other uh, gematria. Only in the Hebrew gematria it decodes. 666, so that's past, right? So uh, the tribulation, and if you believe in any kind of rapture, that that's all past. And we're living in what uh, Jesus came, and it's the kingdom of heaven. He reigned on the throne in heaven, but he uses his body of Christ, and that's where we get the dark ages, where it's you got all these beautiful buildings and Supposedly it's the dark ages, but yet we have all these beautiful buildings and all this stuff. So what was I trying to point out again? Well, you know, in, in the comments, um, there's Diana Southard. She, right. also, she also believes that everything in the Bible has already happened, that Revelation isn't something to come. It's already happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Revelation 20, 7 through 9, is some people think we're in Satan's little season where— uh, the the whole na all the nations are deceived. It says that Satan will be loosed out of his pit, or it's not l literally Satan. He'll he'll just have his power again. So all these elite, they're all they're all connected because it says in that all the nations will be deceived, and it's it's clear that all the nations are deceived right now. So so some people think we're in Satan's little season, and it's not all of it's partial preterism where where it's it's you know we're up to about revelations 27 through 9 i'm an all millennials i i'm not a uh like a dispensationalist where see there's four views of revelation you can check it out there's a guy named steve greg he's he's got a ministry called the narrow path he's got a lot of research he's been a partial preterist for like 20 but a lot of people are you know they're seeing this this like there was some kind of reset and mud flood or whatever they want to call it, but but it's uh, basically we're in Satan's little season. We're being deceived. The Statue of Liberty has it says that Satan will be loose. We know the Statue of Liberty is a statue of Satan. It's like a Baphomet, a, like a tranny male prostitute whore. Or something. If you look at the chain, there's a chain around it. I, I think you could compare it to some representations of lucifer i think a painting by william blake with the chain but also interestingly yeah. lucifer is venus to the greeks and venus is associated yeah. with copper the metal green liberty and the statue of liberty, liberty. is made of copper and it's green so you could argue yeah. that it's lucifer the light bearer which is the right. torch and there's quite a lot there and one more point here just anybody's listening because a lot of people are um, mentioning how the shooter of today um, has this joker like hair his hair is dyed blue and yellow. What happens when you mix blue and yellow? Yeah. You get what color? What, what color do you yeah. get? Green, like Joker. Blue. Yeah. Like Joker, well, like Beetlejuice. The, my interpretation of what's going on now is that Satan is trying to uh, convince that we're close to the rapture. So they're having all these fake, like you know, like Donald Trump is the. Uh, some people say he's the Antichrist. He almost got shot. You know, yes. the deadly head wound. Revelation yeah. thirteen one. Exactly. That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. What do you think about this as a as a preterist? What does it mean to you that on the world stage they're using Revelation as a script for psyops? Yeah. They're faking the uh, they're using revelations trying to say that it's happening now when it's already happened. So they're 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 just confusing everyone, trying to get everybody to give up. The rapture's here, it's getting ready to come when when Christians are supposed to occupy until he comes, we're not supposed to give up. You know, we're supposed to occupy. We're supposed to stand up for the Word of God. We're not supposed to allow this, you know, and we don't use weapons. We use more of a, like, uh, like we, we, uh, um, it's how we live, you know, we just live it. You know, I ignore the government. That's what I do. I, I, I say it's it. mind war. I say you can't get off the grid by hiding in a bunker in the hills. You get off the grid mentally. Like, I'm off the grid right. because I've stepped outside of their paradigm, and I see it for what it is. And I don't yeah. operate from within it. And when I talk to people in it, I know where they're coming from. And I'm 100% in agreement that everybody's, by design, 
deceived. Everybody's programmed. And even the programmers are deceived to some extent. The only ones who have broken free of the programming are those who have taken into account what media actually is with a full understanding of psyops and hoaxery and media fakery. And that's not a large group of people yet. Yeah, we could see that all the governments are working together already. It's not like, it's like they're all the elite or all the, the leaders of all the nations are working together. It's the psyop. It's all. So we know that it's like, it's some kind of spiritual warfare. It's not, it's not really, uh, it's not really people we're fighting against, you know, like this satanic deception. And, uh, that's how I see it. I don't, and so I'm trying to think maybe these, uh, well, everybody these, uh, working together. Well, just think about the ISS international space station. Space is like this false heaven concept, an atheistic heaven. The atheists believe in it and every nation is a part of it. And I would liken the space program collectively as a modern tower of Babel, mankind, one language, one mission from earth to the heavens. And when they reach that point, the tower gets scattered. And I think that's kind of the point we're reaching here. And it was kind of, uh, I think it was portrayed in Leave the World Behind, the Tower of Babel falling, and it all involves the blackout, EMPs, etc. That's what I think might yeah, be coming like next. It's like, it's like obelisk worship. They send up these obelisks, these rockets that look like a dildo to space. It's what, it's like worshiping, Oh, it is. It's the yeah. it's the severed member of Osiris, the Washington mm -hmm. Monument, and the Saturn V. Saturn is another Osiris reference. It's it's their symbol of the sun that rises after it's set and dismembered, and that's why it's very significant that the m moment the sun sets, eight forty six with George Floyd, cassette Prince of Darkness. Uh, the ter th there's all kinds of code, like you know the Terminator, uh, the Terminator right. line where the sun meets where the where the day meets night where the sun dies symbolically. But the Pope bows to the obelisk at St. Peter's Basilica three times a day. The stone obelisk and the rockets, it's, it's just symbolic uh, syncretism. Yeah, it's syncretism. Put your glasses on. If you put your, uh, you know, they live glasses on, you can see them. I can see them because, like, they're all inverted people. That, like, they're inverts, like... I, Trump is a I, big fat woman. I, I don't look. Look, I can't. I can't jive with the whole Trump's a woman because there's no way he gave birth to Barron when he was 60. But um, a lot of people think that. I I need more more info. But yeah. literally, I'm unshockable. So hey, I appreciate the okay. call very much. Great information, and call back anytime. Okay. Anyway, hey, one thing: if you want to know the different interpretations of Revelation, there's a Steve Gregg videos. He has four interpretations of revelations and it used to be everybody thought that the tribulation was over and all in 70 ad but so if you want to check that out check out steve grave steve greg videos thank you have a nice day Bye. got it got it i found the link okay i will put a link out there in my notes thanks for the call okay nice to talk to another preterist and Revelation Four Views by Steve Gregg. It's a two hour and eleven minute video. I'm gonna mark I'm gonna put it down here. So if you go to minds.com slash infinite plane society, that's where I put all my receipts. Anything we talk about gets dropped here. And that's because I don't know how long X is gonna be around around. I use this site exclusively for all the links of the things that we talk about. You can find it there. Conscious reality said Tim, I literally heard in another live someone saying that he looks like Joaquin Phoenix, the Joker. And this chat live was just a reaction. Oh, interesting. It was a reaction channel. And they said he looks like Joaquin Phoenix. That's random. I would also say, too, though, that the fact that his hair is this blue-yellow, that could be another Joker reference as well. Because you got Joker with the green hair. Beetlejuice is out there right now. The movie just came out green hair trying to dig into what this all means but the obviously the connection here joker 2 is about to come out and this is a joker-esque character and remember the previous guy maxwell Azrello, who was outside of the trump white house let's look at maxwell Azrello and just compare the two mr eat the rich 
and he has the crazy Joker looking. And there he is, this one eye symbolism. Set himself on fire next to a hot dog stand. You notice he didn't scream. Do you know why he didn't scream? There's this stuff called, I think it's called Burn Joe. Um, let me see if I can find it. There's this special effects gel that they put on so they can set actors on fire. They use it for Game of Thrones. And you have to hold your breath. But it can you can coat somebody in this clear gel. And and if that one indication that they're using it is there's not going to be any screaming because they're holding their breath. Okay, let me see if I can pull this up. We talked about this, a oh, Zell gel. So it's a fireproof gel called Zell gel. When it comes to showing people burned alive for Game of Thrones, stunt performers wear three layers of fireproof underwear soaked in Zell gel. Naked burn gel. Fire skin 360, the premium product designed for the purposes of creating long burns directly on the skin, also called naked burns. So this is industry standard stuff for fire stunts and i i was watching this maxwell as rello stunt performed on tv in front of cnn and i looked into this and what goes into it and in the fine just in these discussions i was like i, I was deep in the weeds here and someone had said that you have to hold your breath so i'm thinking this guy coats himself and before he lights himself on fire his hair does look slicked down so you're thinking oh he's doused himself in something no, he came out covered in Zell gel. Special effects. We say fake until proven real. Yeah, the special effects need to be considered on every PSYOP like this, any event like this. Elephant Tusk says, there is no singular Satan. It is a title, and specifically entities embody this role or title. Yeah, sure. Uh, Satan, the accuser. I told Marcus Goldfinch that I am his Satan. You know, like Satan and Job. Like I'm doing God's work, punishing him. Okay, green hair. Yep, exactly. Pippi Longstruff says, get a room, LOL. Not sure <laughs> what in reference to. Very active chat. 252 people in video. Another 50 or more on audio. We've covered a lot of ground. Looking forward to 10-4. But the next big date to look for or look at, 9-17, the night of the full moon. On 9-17, there are, well, there's indications in Leave the World Behind and The Edge of Tomorrow, which is a doomsday movie, that something's going to happen. Not sure what. Let's see. I, I guess I should play this clip since I mentioned it. We're talking about the fake space station and this flip that has the globe earthers baffled. This is actually sad. It is sad that someone as smart as Mick Toon can't see through a special effect that could probably fool a kindergartner. And I don't even know if that's the case. And her hair. And this was pointed out, I think it was by uh, Cub Star this morning. Yeah, I got to read this comment too. The actual trick here is that Sunni is upside down and Butch starts the right way. So we're looking at a pen and Teller trick. He turns upside down and fastens his feet. You can tell when the blood goes to his head and puffs up his face. Sunni's hair keeps returning to its downward position whenever she moves. It doesn't drift freely. Gravity is up in this video. This is a practical trick. His wires don't cross over, or if they do, they're attached to a rotating fastener. So here's the clip that has McToon utterly baffled. Is so much different than being on Earth, and it, I think it opens up that door of making you think a little bit differently, just perspective. And I have that opportunity. I think I was on, you know, week 12 of writing a journal to send down to folks, and I really feel very fortunate to the, about that, being able to send it to people and they can understand what we're doing up here and see that. You know, as someone who has done a lot of work with editing, Final Cut Pro, multiple layers, chroma key, I give them an F. I can see the edges around this guy. That scene behind them, 
I don't even think they're in the simulation, in the model. I think they're just in front of a green screen. And she's upside down. He was vertical. Now he's upside down. And as Cubstar pointed out, I mean, this is entirely different. When you're looking at him here, his face is calm, relaxed, kind of pale. Kind of pale. Um, now we flip him. And now he is red like a tomato. That's why that person sent me that tomato head song. His face, look, he's swelled up. He swelled up. Now he's upside down like her, and his hair is starting to stand up. This is funny that this fools people. And she's like, this is world-class science. McToon, the way he twisted, that's not possible with wires. So amazed. He's doing the soy jack. You know, the soy jack? It's that meme where the guy with the neck beard has his mouth wide open and he's pointing like he's just amazed at something. This is McToon. This is your average glurf watching these cheesy special effects. Like, OMG, that's so amazing. World-class science. It's like, this isn't even world-class special effects. This might have been passable, I don't know, in the 80s? This is pretty terrible. I'm sorry. I've seen better special effects on the Power Rangers. And, and that was pretty cheesy looking stuff. I think it opens up that door of making you think a little bit differently, just perspective. And I have that opportunity. I think I was on. All right. Anyway, look at this guy's tomato head. Case closed. If you fall for this, you can't see through basic kindergarten level special effects. You're reality impaired. Uh, nothing to be proud of. Okay, we talked about the fact that Jack Posebeck and others are still sharing videos of sheep and chickens telling their followers that these are cats and dogs, prompting the Klan and the Proud Boys to go marching in Springfield. Uh, we're talking about the shooter and his strange appearance and antics and his hair being the blue-yellow of the Ukraine flag is easily a reference to the green hair of Joker. Joker 2 comes out 10-4. And I just learned today that people thought the Joker 2 mob outside the Trump courthouse were there for Trump. But no, they were there for, they were extras chanting for Joker. So you already have the merging of this mob associated with Joker 2 and this assassination of Trump attempt because Trump again was in on the 55th anniversary of the Trump, I'm sorry, of the MLK uh, assassination. So that's 4 4 Then 4 4 Three. Trump is arraigned. Lean Dion says they can't do it as good as Hollywood looks so fake it must be real. Violet Pangon says that green hair points to more 10 4. Exactly. So here you have a connection to 10 4, an assassination attempt, a guy who threatened Trump indirectly on a 6 11. He was shot at 6.11 p.m. I'm looking at 10.4 as a highly significant date. But again, uh, JL called and he has his explanation for why he's suggesting August 4th is the date. I don't have any real reason to dispute that. But uh, I, I'm looking at this 10.4 now um, suspiciously. And I don't make predictions here. Uh, not in the sense that we're guessing. We're making inferences based on what they have shown us. That's a little different. I have reasons. Diana Southhart said, ISS is remedial special effects artists. They finished last in their class. I have a little experience with it back when I was heavily into video editing and I would actually get paid gigs over it. And I would not have been comfortable passing off anything with chroma key where you have any kind of fuzzy edges or the scales off and it looks like the person isn't even there. But there are so many people who are just selectively non-critical. And I have a plan for this as a thought experiment. Just imagine what would happen if you had, let's just say 10 or 15 people from a video editing special effects class at a university in a room and you were able to show them alternate clips and have them respond real or fake. So you show them some Netflix, some astronaut, and they'll say, you know, fake. Then you show them some guy on the ISS. They'll say real. 
And you go back and forth, and you would easily be able, I believe, to confuse them. You would be able to show them unequivocal evidence of fakery, and they would be conflicted because they, their experience, their knowledge would tell them, yeah, that's fake. But their belief system is that, no, that's real. I think you could induce some cognitive dissonance. Same thing with the bubbles. Or, or more interestingly, talk to a scuba diver and be like, look at this footage of the spacewalk. Does that not look like light diffusion as you would experience it 40 feet underwater in the dark? Your flashlight's only going to go so far underwater, which we understand why. But then how come you have that same effect in outer space? So it'd be an interesting experiment to get visual effects experts to critically examine NASA footage. But they wouldn't, or even, even SpaceX stuff or Blue Origin, but they won't look at it critically. They're critical functioning. It's like they, they shut it off when they're looking at the particular context. It's like their critical thinking is context specific. Same thing with skepticism. Left is skeptical against right and vice versa, but neither are skeptical of the worldview itself. They just argue over interpretations. Fascinating. Um, thanks again, all the callers, all the chat. Appreciate everybody here. If you want to get live stream not notifications, there's a link in the chat. Go to ips.monster. You also get the newsletters. And the IPS Insider is going into print next week um, I'll, at the very latest, if not sooner. It depends on how well I do with art sales. But everything here helps. Every comment moves this conversation forward. And we've been uncovering a lot of great information. Uh, we started off today, just to reiterate, Time Magazine has Trump being chased off a golf course. And this was released on 9-11. So listen to the Morning Joe. Morning Joe talking about this cover. To the sounds of year of the cat. Let's take a look at the new wow. issue of well Time done. Magazine. The headline reads, In Trouble, with an illustration of Donald Trump driving a golf cart into a sand trap. We're going to be talking good, about guys. Taylor Swift, cats, and last night's debate in two minutes. So there they are, gawking over this cover. Probably had no idea how prescient this cover is. Esteban says, is this where I should be signing up instead of YouTube? Uh, yeah, YouTube's unreliable. They hate me. I'm suing them. So I would recommend go to ips.monster or join Patreon. But if you sign up at ips.monster, you will get notifications reliably and you will be getting the archives sent to your box. So there's the link right there. Go ahead and sign up. And everyone, thanks for joining. This is Symbia, Autohooksology. I don't live in truth or Just because you saw it on the screen doesn't make it real. I don't take the red pill. I don't take the blue pill. I just choose to follow my dreams. Autohooks and chill. I stepped off the world stage and I moved away from all the fake outrage and the hearsay. And I don't give the time of day to those who naysay. Because they got a bad case of the mind day. I stepped away from the game entirely. I won't be caught up in their lame dichotomy. I stepped away from the cage entirely. I'm free today and my mind's been set. By reading out of oxology. Out of the control system finally. I know where to go if you follow me. Cause I've been reading out of oxology. Nothing can bother me. Out of oxology. Walk up the screen before it's blast. i
Using all the judgment, you won't get a reaction Won't defend it, I won't budge until I get all the facts in I won't argue with the bots about the next current thing Crying 